YouTube, it's Brad Phillips. We got the Viper 70. Yes, it's only 70 today, but soon there may be new things coming. So we put some DeBro low, low bounce tires on here, two inches on all three of the landing gear. That should help a little bit with rollout. We're running 5,000 6S, even though the manual says 4,800 maximum size. Like who makes a 4,800? I want to know. So we're going to try this. We got the CG to work out, four minute timers dialed in, take off flaps, throttle holds off. Everything is ready to rock and roll. We do have safe on this, but it's not gonna be turned on until we let you know. Here we go. Fifty percent throttle there. Guys, that's like no trim so far. Jeez, wow. that's awesome. I was doing two clicks of trim on the on the ailerons. This one really, really good. You ready? Mm -hmm. So that was the first pass with this plane. Oh, that thing looks so good. Out of the throttle, into it now. What a beauty, guys. This Viper jet is just awesome. Full landing flaps coming down, no, no throttle. Look at that stable creature up there. Feels like it's barely moving in between the house and us. Mm -hmm. Look at that, into the speed, 70 millimeters, gets the job done, guys. And then janking it up. Loving it, guys. Just absolutely loving it. Let's take about 10 steps back toward the road. Good. and then tight in. You good? Mm -hmm. Guys, this is, uh, it's so weird because I did this plane at this property, uh, but the last one we did at our old property. And so it's just, sur it's surreal to be experiencing it again like this. New AR-631. I love, absolutely love the way that this thing flies. It is rock solid. It's pretty calm day, so it should be pretty solid. I'll try a practice final here. You good? Mm -hmm. This is pretend. That is awesome. Is there a reason you're way up there and I'm way back here? Guys, the sun's at our back. It's hot, hot, hot today. 6S. This is a Gen 2. 5,000. Flying are totally rock solid. Take off flaps dialing in now gear coming out. I just want to see how she touches down. A little bit of nose down tendency, probably 4% elevator there, if that. Full landing flaps here over the vampire killing zone. Looking for that shadow as an aid. Oh, well, that should be pretty good. Wow. Okay, out of the flaps, guys. It is so, it's so cool. 40 seconds left on our four minutes. I am sure that this pack would do more than four, but I'm not going to push it. I'm just gonna do what I do best, which is wait until it burns out. A million pieces. Just rudder for that turn there, okay? Take off flaps, we're gonna really relax it here. Gear coming out. Landing flaps. Really, really, really relaxing at this time. That's our time down. See the, the shadow? Looking for clues here. Oh man, that was beautiful. That was okay, amazing. so a couple thoughts. Low bounce tires, they did the trick. That thing didn't bounce at all. Now, if yours truly would have just kept it on the runway, it would have looked a lot nicer, but it was actually slowing down decently. So we're gonna pause, 
we'll take in the battery, we'll check the XBC uh, battery checker so you can tell what the voltages are because this is an AR631, you're not gonna have full telemetry on your pack voltage unless you upgrade to a smart um, ESC. And you could technically do that, put an AV and ESC in there, and then you would have full telemetry on your pack. You'd know each cell and you'd know your full pack voltage. So we'll go inside and do that right now. Okay, so show the people inside of their camera crew. Mm -hmm. um, So you can see what I did. I just used the little piece of Velcro that comes with it to kind of hold the front end in. And then we had a lot better time getting everything squished in compared to what we did the first time we built this plane. We had a really, 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 really hard time getting everything to land. So I don't know if the receiver is just a little bit smaller or exactly what. We did move this strap back. We forgot to cover that. And uh, and this pops right out, no problem at all. Okay, no puffing, feels pretty good. Okay, we're gonna throw this right onto the XPC battery checker, tester, and servo tester. 50%? Wow. That's awesome. So that means you could technically, um, I mean, I would say conservatively, you should be able to get six minutes out of that. You don't wanna draw down your packs real low when you're doing EDFs because you will tempt fate with puffing these things. So I wouldn't do more than uh, basically maybe five to six minutes. So it'll be totally safe. You're not gonna damage your battery. Um, but the 5,000 fits fine, 5,000 Gen 2 uh, 6S. They're, I think they're gonna recommend a 4,000. The reason they might do that is so you can get the CG to be a little bit more on the tail heavy side. The other thing is we were not all the way back. This thing will fit further back. And I'm going to show you that real quick. So it's such a short flight time. Um, these jets just, they're temptress because they, uh, they give you such a short time. And then you're up over the top of the button. So you don't necessarily have to super worry about hitting the, the button. But you see this, I got back a, I would say a finger width there, quarter inch or so back further but I don't think this is gonna close because the canopy is going to bind up here, okay? So if you come down to where we were, then you should be able to get down to where that canopy will still seal down, okay? If you modified your canopy a little bit, you could get it even further back and without actually too much work at all. So I moved my strap back here, it comes here. There's one more position and then this is where we have it. So guys, this plane is awesome. I love the way it flies. I love the way it looks. It's definitely a winner in my book. This is the second time we reviewed it, the AR637 TA, excuse me, the 631 works great. If it had the 637 TA, it'd be nice because you get a little bit more bells and whistles. But to be honest with you, I'd rather have the lower cost than have the more expensive receiver in this because I don't need the Vario or anything. And the TA is not gonna be without it, so. So when you get ready to plug this thing in, it plugs in like this. You have to wait for the thing to initiate. If you're careful, then that'll be better for safe and stuff like that. I even turned safe on in our video, but this will slide way back here because I got all my leads and everything down here on this plane. The last uh, Viper jet I had, I had a really, really, really hard time getting everything in there. So I don't know if I had done something wrong, but this just fits so much better than it did in the old one. See that time? I didn't get this lead all the way up here. And so that's, that's gonna cause a problem with your canopy getting in there. So you gotta kinda work it out to where everything is out of the way. Cause like right here, that won't work. You do have to kinda get those leads right where they need to be, okay? If they aren't right where they need to be, that won't clip. So without further ado guys, check the links in the description below. This plane is a huge winner. If you haven't had a chance to fly it, it looks really good by the way with the gear down. I love the way it looks, making 100 mile an hour passes or whatever it is, just like this. I just love it. It looks so realistic. It, it does every control axis, it's just rock solid. Um, I did notice that the gain seemed a little bit high, so I was gonna see if I can go into this real quick and go to the forward programming, click, and then the gyro settings, save, select, so it's on auxiliary two. Okay, so that's where safe is on. That's where safe is. 
AS3X is on, but then I don't know if I can do gain. Yeah, it doesn't look like I can do gain in there. That would have been really super nice if I could do gains. But yeah, it looks like you can't do gains on that, but that would be sweet. Guys, this plane flies great. If you haven't already bought one, please check the link in the description below. When you buy one, you can uh, follow that link and you'll help support our channel. And then uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. We're gonna go ahead and go into the build video now. We'll show you what we had to do. And then there was one other detail that I missed in the video. You see how I tied this twisty tie? I actually cut the sheath off. And then I just used that for that last little bit of clearance. We used some RTL fastener stuff up here to kind of keep things centered. Works really, really, really good. But then this was a nice, easy alternative on the mains. Cause I got a little nervous that these lifted numbers, these raised numbers, were gonna hit the side here and slow it down. We didn't experience any of that. It taxied amazing. So very happy that low bounce tire really did improve things a lot. So we'll link to the low bounce tires. You need two of them so you can get a total of three wheels. Um, or you could just do it so that the mains are, are low bounce and then the nose gear is what it was at the beginning. But uh, either way guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We're gonna have a little bit more about this and uh, we'll see you on the next video. All right, so we have another 5,000 milliamp hour. We set the timer to six. I flew a couple of flights. Camera crew had to take the kids some, uh, for an appointment. So we're back and the sun is down. So here goes nothing. Takeoff flaps are on. Just loving, loving flying this plane, guys. I got about, let's call it four and a half minutes on the 4,000. I was able to bring it back a little bit further, but I didn't think, I didn't think it was an appreciable improvement on the CG. It wasn't huge. So I'm just going to go with the longer flight time here, folks. I feel like it handles the uh, 5,000 like a champ. And then you just get more. You just get more. More of what you want. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. oh, it's so cool, that cloud. Okay, let's show you guys uh, safe. Okay, so here's safe. Totally hands off. Out of the throttle. Limited bank angle. And then there's the limit up, limit down, limit roll left, or excuse me, right, and then limit roll left. It's got a lot of bank angle in there for safe, okay? So I'm gonna get out of safe now. Hey, just a heads up, guys, when you're coming out of safe, be careful. You see that bird? <laughs> Might need new underwear. Over there. Oh, the bird was. Oh. Why is the bird wearing underwear? <laughs> it like dropped out of the sky. It was hilarious. Yeah. I think it might have been like experiencing a rabies reaction. <laughs> Guys, I love flying this Viper. It is one of the more relaxing jets that you can fly, and yet it still gives you that performance, that oomph, that 6S powerhouse. And look how stinky gorgeous it is, guys. Let's go over here by the bowl, please. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna try to get into the uh, beautiful sunset here. You good? Mm -hmm. Man, that is just absolutely gorgeous, that big cloud up there. See how you can just cruise along. You don't have to blast the throttle the whole time. But really, to be honest, if you hit your six minute timer, then you need to land. That would be my recommendation. Guys, it just looks and feels and flies so good. Eagle killing zone here. Let's take a sharp turn around that. I'm gonna go behind you, okay? Real <laughs> slow. I have flaps all together. I think we should do some bowl flying here for the folks. Okay. Two minutes 40 left on my timer here. Oh, Lanny's flap deployment, a little bit of throttle to keep her moving. Look at that beautiful tarp over your head. Mm -hmm. 
We just Dang. did that tonight, guys. Ooh, that was pretty close, guys. That full flap deployment took away just enough of my airspeed that I thought I was going to bite it into the trees there. So beautiful. Guys, I hope the camera's picking it up as good as I'm seeing it because it's just gorgeous. That's great taking a landing. By the way, it is late, like almost 9 o'clock at night. So that is a little bit. Yeah, I noticed that. Yep, there yep. we are. Okay, we're going to do another practice attempt here. Kickoff flaps going in. Really using up the real estate here. See the canopy. <laughs> he jacked. He jacked. <laughs> okay, so I got a minute 17, so I'm going to take back off. I wanted to talk to you about this. Oh, look, our bug zapper's having some personal issues. Oh, no. There. I think we may have to replace that thing. Maybe it got like a bird or something this time. Might have. So I have noticed that this canopy will pop off if you have the battery back as far as I'm running it. And so if that happens to you, the good news is you have to have a pretty nasty jar for that to pop off. The reason it's popping off is because that battery expands this opening just ever so slightly, okay? And you'll notice it pushed forward when we did that too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this battery and get it right back here to where my plugs are. Oh, in fact, my little red and black wire, that pushed down in front of the wires when that happened. Okay, so you see where all the servo plugs go? That's where you want that sitting. So we have a full minute and a half left. I'm actually totally comfortable with taking back off. I just want to make sure everything's intact. And then this little piece of Velcro has worked really nice to kind of give us that little added benefit. Now be careful, this plane takes some room to take off. Okay, so my eyesight failed me there. I was way at the end of the runway. Okay, flaps are up. See, we're all intact. Rudder, ailerons, flaps, and then throttle. Uh, okay, so we're still good there. I did notice that this likes to slip. I'm gonna show you what happens. Okay, you see this little thing in here? This little L bracket goes down. All you have to do is brace this here and give it a twist, okay? And you will straighten right back up. And then in my case, I'm just gonna grab that and give it a straighten, okay? So I think we're probably good to go again, but I wanna just check the battery. Yep, the battery slipped on that impact. Mm. Are you concerned about the battery life? Are you? Mm, a little bit. <laughs> then I really am. Okay, then I'm going to take off again. Okay. You ready? Yep. Okay, guys, here goes. <laughs> Those low bounce tires, they do get caught up in the grass a little bit more. Okay? So just an FYI. Okay? Kick off flaps, landing flaps, and gear. Here we go. Right to over the nearby vampire killing zone. A little bit of throttle and then down. And we'll roll into the grass to slow it down. <laughs> and the pilot ejected again. All right, guys, we'll pause and go over by the plane. All right, guys, so I just want to take a second and talk to you about this. You see this grass? You see how tall that is? That's like ankle high. Uh, we fertilized the edge to try to get the grass to fill in so we wouldn't flip over planes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that only works if you cut it with a grass, uh, with a lawnmower. 
So as you can see, I went over here and then uh, my pilot ejected again. I love this plane, guys. It is like one of my favorite jets. I'm gonna unplug this battery. Well, actually, let's let's check. Everything's working. Everything's working. Everything's working. Everything's working. So we should be fine. Let's check throttle. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, we're fine. Um, so throttle holds on. I'm actually gonna unplug this battery just to be nice. These packs do all right, but I'm gonna tell you, I'm not a big fan of Velcro but really on a plane like this it helps a lot it's just you need to know where to put it so on this plane you got to put it on like the front third if you can hold that that's the 6s gen 2 and you see where i've got it marked for the 4000 it's basically right on the front edge of that second box so it goes pretty much all the way back here on top of the receiver so it fits different and the canopy does close but the canopy does like to come off even with the 4000 because as you push that back a little bit better you can get a little more flare and there is absolutely absolutely no negative re repercussions i almost wonder if i was correct in my assessment about where the cg is supposed to be like does it start here or does it start there where the wing joiner hits the wing box or not the wing joiner where the wing root hits the wing box um this marking i think that really it should be back another five uh, five millimeters if you can get that this thing will land and flare so much better for you but as you can see it's not like especially hard to land if you could put it on your mains and you've got enough rollout area i just didn't want to be chasing it all the way down here and this stuff needs to be cut with the lawnmower but uh love this plane love the way it flies it handles great in the air when you do have an off-handed landing it doesn't seem to destroy itself quite like i expected it might um, it has been a long time since I flew this Viper, but man, I tell you what, it's just like riding a bike coming back to this plane. It is just every bit of everything I wanted it to be, but the last time I was flying it, I think I brought it in this way, and I had a little bit of nose wind. I was, I was flying into the wind, and I brought it in, and I took it just a, just a couple of degrees too far, and it slipped out from under me. So this thing just feels so good. It feels like you can do no wrong. So be careful because eventually you will fall out from under yourself. Because if you're flying like this and there's no lift, then you're gonna fall eventually. But if you've got enough G's going and you're making a nice base leg turn, you can bring them in and just do some glorious landings. Also, I wanted to let you know that I did check the flap setting. You can run the flaps down another 50% and they move all the way almost straight down barn door style. So depending on how you're landing, if you're doing a flare landing like this, then you probably don't actually want that because it's gonna undermine your ability to lift the nose all the way up, okay? So that's one thing to keep in mind. If you fly this plane and you intend to land it with a flare, you may actually wanna land with takeoff flaps. But if you have a super long runway and you just wanna do a nice greasy nose up attitude but not real steep like what I was getting tonight, it felt really good. These tires did slow it down a lot. Although I can definitely say I don't remember bouncing the plane a lot. I remember overshooting the runways a lot. I definitely remember that because it was kind of hilarious when we landed on that, uh, that first maiden flight, we landed on a, a basketball court and the thing just shot forever past the basketball court. So the other thing too is this plane is not especially heavy, which is uncommon for the jets in this size class. A 70 millimeter EDF, with a 6S 6 5000 pack is a pretty, I mean, pretty hefty pairing. That typically goes with the heavier plane, but this thing is light. And so it's really light on its feet. It just looks gorgeous in the air. And I love the high G maneuvers. You get a little teeny bit of wing bend in there. It just looks so realistic. I love this plane, guys. It is so exciting. And I have a sneaky suspicion, sneaky, that when you see this, you're gonna wish that that thing was just a few millimeters bigger but that's all I can say right now for fear of losing my uh, work with Horizon. <laughs> all right, guys, you get the point. You probably already know what I'm talking about, and it has nothing to do with rake in the yard with a two meter red rake. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say. Um, other thoughts, camera crew? It's a great size for a jet too. It is. It's not overly, if you're just getting into jets, mm -hmm. it's not huge. It's easy to pick up, but mm -hmm. it's slick. 
okay? The finish on here is slick. That mold release will make it so that it'll slip out of your hand. So you can actually carry this from the other side, okay, like this. The F-16 has gotta be one of the worst to pick up. Uh, I love the F-16, it's one of my favorite jets, but this thing is an everyday flyer. The F-16 is like an everyday uh, commitment to excellence because if you don't do it right there's consequences every time this thing you can really slam it around and it does all right now that being said drawbacks i know you guys are going to slam me if i don't mention this the landing gear do bend quite easily that being said again my rough landing strip here just show them it looks like a gravel driveway because it was, it was a gravel a driveway. driveway so when you see this full in like seven or eight years and it's perfect and it looks like a golf course <laughs> then you can say brian that's really nice work you did but for today in the middle of a drought where the only rain we got came when we literally it came when we were pulling our tarp off of the hay we pulled the tarps off and then we heard the rain hitting the tarps and i'm thinking to myself we're in the middle of like a, a three-week hiatus from rain and we had about three weeks of perfect rain. It was gorgeous. And we got fertilizer in right. We got seed down right. It was amazing. But then it got extremely hot this week. So we're like still like hot and muggy. It's supposed to get a little bit nicer this weekend. Oh, it's gonna be glorious. But that being said, guys, this Viper is awesome. I loved it before. I love it again. And you're probably thinking to yourself, well, what did you do with your other Viper? Well, the other Viper, I sold it off to a good home because it was kind of beat up and I just didn't want another project. So I knew this was coming. I just didn't know when. Um, I already had it in the, you know, I knew it was coming. And I think this was about, I don't know, three or four months ago. And so it, it was just one of those things where I had an opportunity to sell it to somebody that wanted it really bad. And I'm really glad I did because this plane is awesome. And to be perfectly frank, you put a little glue on there. Some of these planes just behave better. I don't know why that is. It's very strange to me. I haven't quite figured it out, but once you crash them a few times, you also, you knock down the stress level, um, you know, from where it may, may have been. But I'll be honest, this plane just like doesn't stress me out. I'm comfortable with it. Like when I landed it down there short of the runway, I was all the way down here and the visibility is a little bit tough. It doesn't show on camera because these cameras are so good at low light. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what, when it gets dark like this, this plane does disappear. And that's, that, that is another complaint on this plane. If I have to list complaints, the complaints are, guys, that is a beautiful paint job, but that disappears. Look at the sky. Mm -hmm. Look at the colors. Look at the sky. Look at the colors. Look at the colors. Look at the white. Look at the blue. Look at the gray. Blue, gray, white, folks. When you're designing a radio controlled airplane, maybe stay a little bit away from the blue, even though blue is a cool color and it's really popular. It's kind of hard to see in the sky. Um, that being said, you know, we don't see a lot of bright yellow planes. And it's funny because like, I wouldn't put yellow on my list, my short list of things that I like in terms of colors, but I love yellow planes. They pop in the sky like crazy. Uh, just not banana yellow. It's gotta be like, it's gotta be the right yellow. Yeah. And maybe that's why they don't do it. So, but guys, this plane is gorgeous, gorgeous. Hey, it's so weird. If you had like a bigger tailpipe on this thing and you had like bigger batteries, I wonder if it'd be more awesome. Hmm. I think it I probably would. Know. And maybe if it was red, if it was red, do you think it'd be awesome? Red would be good. Instead of, you know, blending in with the sky, it would mm -hmm. maybe stand out in the sky. Yeah. Unless of course you have like a brilliant red sunset, which we get all the time here. Uh, the good news is those sunsets, we get pink and red in the sky a lot but I can always see the planes because you silhouette at that time of night. Mm -hmm. So anyway, guys, the only complaints I have on this plane are the fact that uh, the landing gear do bend a little bit easy. I have replaced these, compliment surprise, and they sent these. Um, I don't think they need to be replaced at all. If you're flying off of a hard surface and you fly with the stock gear, I think you're gonna be fine. You just have to have a long enough runway. Also, when you veer off to slow it down, make sure you have very well manicured grass. Yes, this can fly from grass, but I'll be honest with you guys. If you want this thing to fly off of grass, don't get this one, get the Futura. I know Horizon's gonna hate it that I say that because here's the thing, this is just re-released with the 631 and it is gorgeous, I love it. But the Futura has gear that are so much nicer and it's an 80 millimeter, so it's also very good. But I like this plane better. I actually like this plane better. Now. That plane's faster. It's 
more robust, it lands slower, it flies faster, it's got way better gear, but you know what? I like this one better. I don't know why, I shouldn't. This thing is not as good, but yet I like it better. And I think this one might be a bit cheaper by the time you put in a 631. Now, the, the other very, very, very good thing is if you get the 631 or the Air 637T, then you could have full telemetry. If you have full range telemetry, you need your pack voltage, all that good stuff, which is kind of handy. So just bounce those things off of your mental walls and see which one sticks. I think this is a great plane, especially in the uh, bind and fly. Uh, configuration is just an excellent plane. It's an excellent value. It's a good size. Um, you know, grass, it, it's got to be pretty well manicured. Just keep that in mind. Uh, any other thoughts, camera crew, that I missed? I think that's about it. We didn't, the only problems we had on the build were literally putting the wheels on. Yeah, the that was kind was of a pain in the butt. Smooth. And plus, we had a crazy night when we were filming this. Uh, I won't even go into the details, yeah. but it was just crazy. It was, it, it was, was it was a bad night. We ran into some problems. Uh, familial issues with, uh, I don't know if it was sickness, if I'd call it no. sickness, it was something else. Was but anyway, just I, it's just not something you talk about on YouTube. With. But uh, one of these days, maybe you'll hear about it. But I can tell you this, this plane is awesome. It's it's gonna brighten your day if you get one. So I would definitely highly, highly, highly recommend it. And should we turn around and show them the uh, beautiful sunset again? As long as mosquitoes aren't carrying you away yet. The mosquitoes are trying. So that being said, guys, uh, check the link in the description. We know you've been supporting us and we really appreciate that. Please keep it up. It's really helpful to the channel. We, you know, it's, it's hard to believe, but you know, YouTube ad revenue is pretty terrible. Um, and unless you're doing financial reviews or something like this, you pretty much don't make that much on it. Um, and we're not, we're not necessarily here to earn the money. I mean, I still work a full-time job, but some year it'd be kind of cool if I could maybe just do this. Anyway, the whole point is, the more you support us, the closer we get to that target. The camera crew obviously works her tail off to help bring great content to you guys. We, we invest like crazy all the time. We just, we just ordered some new mics. It's been an issue, we understand. We're aware of it. Please give us a little bit of grace. They just released our ideal mic setup last month at the beginning of May, okay? This is June 9th, yep. okay? So June 9th, you're probably not seeing this on June 9th, I know that. But on May 1st, they released our Rhodes dual mic setup, which is what we would have bought had it been available a year and a half ago when we got our last lab mic. Our last lab mics were working great for a long, long, long time, and then all of a sudden they just decided not to. So that's the, the backstory. It's a short backstory. We really want to bring you guys great content, and the audio quality is important to us too. But we feel like stopping content for three or four weeks while we figure out mics is pretty stupid. So we're just gonna keep putting it out and it should be here this week. So hopefully the audio quality will go from like uh, terrible, like way back in the early days to pretty good. So I'm quite excited. And uh, also I know that it's very important to some of you guys. So don't hear us in the wrong way. We want to keep you happy with the audio quality, but it is something that's a little bit out of our hands right now. We're waiting on stuff. So. Um, Thank you guys. You helped us hit 100,000 subscribers. Uh, we're gonna have a video. It's it's came in the mail. It's in the box. We've got the silver play button. It's sitting inside. So we can't thank you enough. It has been a uh, uh, a very challenging task going from uh, zero to where we are now. And uh, without the camera crew's help, I could have never done it. So uh, obviously, thank you, camera crew first. But then, thank you, subscribers for being here for us, coming back, buying stuff from the links, clicking the bell for notifications, all the things that we've been asking you to do. There's basically five things. Um, we just really appreciate it. We couldn't have done it without you. And if you stop coming, then it's just gonna all go away anyway. So we really appreciate you. Please keep coming. Uh, help us to reach new heights, um, pun intended. Stick around for the build if you'd like to see it. We do the radio setup, all that good stuff. Um, we pretty much left the stock configuration. No elevator correction was really needed. Um, so I think whatever we set, in fact, I'm gonna show that real quick just because uh, I don't remember reevaluating that on the flap system. Yep, we have no elevator correction. So if you guys are asking me, I know you're gonna ask me, there was no flap to elevator correction on this and it flew great. So maybe there needs to be a little bit more. I don't know. But all I'm going to say is it, it flew pretty darn good. So 
Guys, without further ado, I'm gonna say it one more time and I promise I'm gonna let you go to the next step. Check the link in the description below. Buy the plane, buy the uh, 6S 5000, 6S 4000. Those are both good choices for this plane. Uh, if you don't already have an NX-8, just get the NX-8, please, please, please. If you have an NXS, it is not going to be good enough for most of the stuff we do. It will be good enough for the beginner planes and then that's all you should be thinking about for that. Maybe one, two planes, maybe get a UMX, um, you know, like an ultra micro, but don't try to use that for everything. You're gonna lose all sorts of features that you want. And uh, even though Horizon is working on an update that's gonna allow you to make some changes on assignments, it's not gonna get you what you think you want. It's gonna get you close, okay? It'll be like a major get out of jail free card. But you want, if you're getting into your second, third plane, just get the NX-8, pull the Band-Aid off. You want it, you're gonna get it anyway. Get it now, enjoy it now. Don't wait six or seven planes, you'll just be wasting your time. Trust me on this, I've been there, done that. I'm giving you good advice. If you decide to get some open TX platform, I'm not gonna be able to help you on it because I don't know it. So if you're new to the hobby, do not cheap out. Get the Spectrum gear. It will be important to help you work your way through. Now after four or five years and you start getting your feet wet, then you wanna go to OpenTX, I get it. Because you can get some really cool features for inexpensive, but I'm telling you right now, you can't ask me. There's a million other people that can help you, but it's just not me. So anyway, guys, come back for more. YouTube! In the AM. These shirts have been working out good. I like them. I don't get this weird print stuff. I just get plain ones and they work good. They aren't stretching out on the neck, which is really nice. And then they show off my wonderful curves. They're super soft. They are actually super soft. <laughs> so follow the link in the description. You'll be supporting our channel. Hey, look at this. It's a box. Wow, that's weird. I bet you wonder what it is, except that you just saw it fly. By the way, awesome plane. Already done this once. Guess why we're doing it again, camera crew? I don't know. I wonder. Can you tell me why? Can, can we tell me why? Because there's a new receiver in it. But there's other reasons. Well, it's the 631 in this one now, right? Yes. Oh, and this time we're going to put some squishy, squishy, bouncy. Feel my squishies. I felt Feel them. both of them. I know. Grab a whole really handful. Really squishy. Yes, exactly. Mm. Okay. Good. So that's going to help us with uh, evidently greasy landings from what I've been told. Oh yeah, it's the Viper Jet. Re-released with amazing AR631 performance. If you haven't already seen me, I have reviewed this. I love this plane. It was good until it was not as good because I destroyed it by crashing it many, many, many times. There's no bottom. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of weird. Okay, so this plane is awesome. It's really fun. It's really good. It's really well behaved. The landing gear are not maybe the most stout thing that we've ever seen, but I really, really like this plane. The biggest problem I had with it on my first go around was the fact that the battery didn't fit well. So we're going to see if they've addressed that. My guess is they probably haven't changed that much. But you know what has changed since I did this camera crew? Mm -hmm. I do. I know the answer to that one. Go ahead. We are using smart batteries. That's right. We weren't using smart batteries before because at the time I was calling them something like dumb batteries or I don't know. As you can see, joke's on me. That being said, these batteries have been so good that I pretty much got rid of all the rest of my batteries. And by the way, that may look insane, but if you think that's insane, you should have seen all the batteries I had before, mm -hmm. which were all sitting there puffing and making fools of themselves. So yes, beautiful plane. Okay, so this thing comes out like this. Okay, it's gonna be good. Now you may have already seen or heard some grumblings about a little bit bigger EDF on the market that uh, maybe the biggest E-Flight EDF since the inception, okay? So wing comes out like this, very simple. Got beautiful winglets go up, I love them. Some foam to protect the foam. I always gotta get a little foam to protect the foam on an E-Flight model. They package up their stuff really, really well. We've been quite happy with that. Very sturdy wings. Ball joints already pre-installed, which is nice. I don't even have to play with my balls here, which is nice. <laughs> I love this plane. It is so much fun. It is so fast. It is so cool. It is so easy to control. 
The only thing I didn't like is the battery position and the wires, if I recall, were kind of a pain. It's been a while since I did it. Oh, guys, dig for your nut sack and bolt sack. Mm -hmm. It was under this foam. Like, what are you thinking, Verizon? Oh, oh, so annoying. Yeah. Don't fold the manuals. Whoever is doing this at the factory, quit it. Put them flat somewhere. Look, you got all this space down here. Tape it on here like you used to do. I hate folded manuals. If you're listening, Horizon, E-Flight, FMS, Banggood, China, everybody in China, everybody else, listen, don't fold our manuals, it's annoying. <sighs> anyway, all right, I'll forgive you because I love, I love this plane, it's a really good plane. Okay. Ball joint, nice. I don't remember if there's ball joints on the previous I one. I don't know. I have to assume there must have been. There must have been. Because I don't think they added that. Okay, Guys, look at that. That's not that much hard work for this no, plane. It's a pretty small set. Um, well, yes, I agree. So, you'll notice that this thing comes out of the box beautifully. This is a 70 millimeter EDF. Look at that beautiful fan. Look how huge it is. Here, I'll try to get it turned so the lights in there. Oh, it's so beautiful. It sounds so good. I can't wait to see this thing in the air. Oh, wow. They added a ferrite core. Actually, two of them. Yay! Yeah, I don't want any of those things. You can keep them. Those things are ridiculous. Look at that. Huge thing. Horizon, can I take that off right now? Oops. I think I, oh, I have a sneaky suspicion that safety feature is going to rip off. Here we go. And then, oh yeah, this is one plane where you might want to have the Velcro. Okay, just saying guys, I have maybe possibly thrown a battery out at like 200 feet in the air on my previous attempts at success, which ended in failure. But you know what's funny? We had the plane flying 10 minutes after I crashed. Well, maybe not 10 minutes, like an hour later. Okay, so that's everything out of the packaging, guys. Mm -hmm. That's everything. Real easy unbox. I love this plane. It goes together relatively easy with the exception of the batteries. If you're using non-smart batteries, they don't fit quite as good. And at the time we were using non-smart batteries. So hopefully this goes a lot smoother. We're gonna pause, reset with the plane stand and come back. All right, so we're gonna start with the horizontal stabilizer and elevators. There's two elevators, as you can see here, two servos, everything's set up for you. All you have to do is put it on. So when you put this thing on, what you have to do is you have to plug all these wires in and then set them into place. So just be aware, it is a little bit tricky to do this because all the wires sit right where you're working. So I don't know if I'm gonna need to untape this or not, but that tape was sort of popping off on mine. So I'm just gonna kind of pull it off for the moment. They're labeled elevator, rudder elevator okay be careful you don't plug them in upside down meaning not brown to brown not yellow to yellow so this is an elevator okay they should be keyed so it's hard to put them in wrong okay but that does not mean you can't put them in wrong especially you can put them in as a rudder okay so this is the elevator okay see how it's brown to brown yellow to yellow you're blocking the light a little bit there thank you okay then what's going to happen after that is this is going to lay flat like this and that's six down now keep in mind we're going to be putting two screws in here and then the other screws are going to go in from top okay so you need to get your screws in there first so inside of my nut and bolt sack here We've got a variety of screws. I believe they're all the same length, okay? I'm gonna verify that right now, okay? I'm just gonna set them all on their head. They look the same. To me, camera crew, if you wanna give them a shot where they can actually see if they're the same, that would be much appreciated. Tonight was one of those nights where we tried desperately to get filming on time and then we ran into some complications hundreds of thousands of them and uh that was kind of a bummer mm -hmm. because even though it was hot 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 out we wanted to film so we could get this one up in the air and it's so disappointing to watch such a beautiful sunset and having missed our opportunity to fly i'm sure you guys have all been there 
Okay, so there's only one size, so it makes it quite easy to do this, okay? I just wanna make sure as I'm doing it, I'm keeping my wires tidy and non-tangled, okay? On this plane in particular, I remember there was quite the fiasco of wiring by the time we were done and ready to hook things up or whatever it is we had to do. I don't think we have to hook up the receiver though. Oh, we just have to hook up the wing. Ugh, see, I'm thinking that was still kind of a pain if I recall. I notice I have a tangle on this one, so I'm trying to take that tangle out if I can. See how the yellow is toward me and the brown towards you? It's gonna be flipped at some point, so. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I try to kind of tidy cables as I go, and it does typically help keep things under control, but you've seen it just as much as I have. You can do your best laid plans and they'll get all tangled up anyway. Okay, this is a uh, two millimeter. I don't know if I mentioned that. Thanks, Tom, for sending the set. That was very nice of you. And also for this plane stand, we've been using the heck out of it, as you can tell. Okay, so we're just going until it kind of squishes the wing down. Okay, then we can take this rudder and hopefully kind of pull that out in the middle, get the wire flat, yell to yellow, brown to brown. We'll verify once we get it plugged in again to double check. Yep, yellow to yellow, brown to brown. Okay, so then all that stuff has to go somewhere. And the thing is, I don't want extra cable up here. We learned that from doing it before. So I'm gonna attempt to get it in here so that all the labels disappear because we don't need to have those labels accessible for later use or anything like that. I mean, we don't wanna rip them off either in case we have to take this off again. But as you see, We've got it so it can tuck down in there pretty nice. So I don't know if they tidy these wires or if they use something with a, a better length on it, but I didn't feel like we could get it nearly that clean last time. I just don't know if this is gonna drop all the way down yet. I have to verify that. There we go. That feels like it's going all the way in mm -hmm. and it's giving us good purchase. Yeah, so I think we're good there. Okay, so the screws should be the same screws as before. There's a total of two more on the side and then one up front, okay? So this is just one of those jets that you get and you think, you know, it's, it's really, you know, I mean, when you first get out of the box, it's maybe nothing too extraordinary. And then you fly it and you're like, wow, that is a good flying plane. And to be perfectly frank, I love the way it flies. And this is one of the, worst examples of bad artwork. And I'm not saying that the art is like unrepresentative of the plane, but I feel like that has got to be one of the ugliest angles for a Viper jet. Oh really? When I, yeah. Hmm. I think it's, it's one of the bad angles. Like the Viper jet is just one of those planes where if you look at it, it almost looks like a porpoise with the top. But if you see it from the end flying at you with the wings, I think it's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And on this box, it's so weird. Some of the box art, and, and I, I'm not trying to beat up the people who took the pictures or whatever they did, because it's actually not, it's not bad pictures. You can see it good. But the thing is, this thing looks good from certain angles. I mean, it's like me, from certain angles, <laughs> it's definitely better than other angles, okay? Which is true for most human beings. Um, but airplanes in particular, I just think, you know, if you look at this, Bad angle. That's okay. Bad angle. Same angle as the front. Good angle. Okay angle. Awesome angle. Okay? Hmm. That's okay. I mean, the landing gear aren't anything you write home about because they don't have any cool gear or anything like that. But at the same time, they're utilitarian and they are uh, reasonably strong. So I have still tempted them to break. So that being said, okay, so we have the tail on. You can see just how easy that went. Very good tail. Everything is, is hinged appropriately. I didn't have any issues with my hinge, um, even after essentially crashing it a few times. A few times, not once, but a few. So AR631 installed, antenna pointed forward, okay? So that means we're gonna be able to do all the forward programming and stuff should be done. Um, for us because the bind and fly. And there's a handful of leads here. This antenna, however, I would like to get it out of the way. I just can't remember how we're gonna do this because I remember we had a real heck of a time 
getting the battery to fit in here. It looks like this is redesigned, actually. I do not remember seeing such a big opening in here. I remember carving a lot out of my plane and having to get that battery back here to get CG out right. Mm. So I don't know, you don't seem to remember it, but I, I don't. It was a huge, it was a huge problem. So, mm. all right, canopy fits good until you get a big battery in there. So we're gonna probably be addressing that shortly. So now the wing has to go on and this is where the problem comes. We have become extremely spoiled with these wires, okay? These wires that we normally don't have to deal with anymore. When you feed those through, look at all the stuff that you have to deal with, okay? It's not ideal. And now they've added a ferrite core. I don't really understand the whole concept of having a ferrite core in there. Evidently, some engineer somewhere was concerned about something somehow. So, whoops. I don't know what happened to mine. It's so weird. I'm not sure where it went. Oh, it's probably, it's probably like some, uh, you know, like FCC rule or whatever. So we're just gonna follow those rules totally and not do anything like that. Not at all. <clears throat> You're welcome, Horizon. So anyway, down here we've got gear and I'm just identifying the plugs. It looks like, I mean, this is a smaller receiver by, I mean, it's pretty darn close actually to what the AR636 was, because that was what we were using before. I'm just trying to get, can you like show them in here? Because I'm trying to show them like these wires and just give an idea of like what we're actually, like right here maybe would be perfect. And then you see this antenna, I'm trying to deal with the antenna because the antenna is gonna be a bit of a problem as it ex escapes here. Because what's gonna happen is, this is going to cause, um, you know, like where the battery sits, it may actually get right up on top of that. And I don't like where that's exiting. Now I'm not saying it would necessarily be better the other way, but I am saying that it's probably going to be vulnerable there. Because if you have a big old battery in there, you're gonna want that battery to come back. So we may have to put some foam in here so we can ride the battery in an angle like we've done on the F-16, um, depending on how this lines up. Also, we have some room under the battery tray, so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and take advantage of that right now if I can, because it's only gonna get worse when we feed all those wires in from the wing. Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and take advantage of that. It looks like the steerable nose gear and the rudder line. So obviously like the steerable nose gear goes to the rudder and then the actual um, control for the serverless retract. So I'm just kind of getting that wire down and into that hole. Okay, so you see kind of how everything is tucked down into the side so it's not, it's not gonna cause us any problems. It doesn't use up really any room. I'm just really being mindful about the placement of all the excess wire on this one because we got burned on it last time, okay? Now I'm not saying we didn't get the plane to work. I love this plane. We just, it was just kind of a pain and I think it can be better avoided than what we did. And then like this thing is all tangly dangly so I'm gonna untangle that. These are the steps that if you can do them right in the right order, they will save you tons of trouble. Um, forceps are gonna be a godsend. If you use forceps on a model, this would be one where you're gonna wanna have the forceps out. So we are gonna get our forceps out and then they will be here to help us kind of stay out of the way a little bit as we film. So those are the gear. Yep, the gear are gonna go out. All right, so now the next step is I need to get side cutters. So I'm gonna get side cutters and forceps. Um, side cutters are gonna cut the zip tie that's on the wing because we do have to get that cut. Now these are forceps, if you don't know what I'm talking about. These are forceps, these have bent tips. The bent tips are invaluable. You would think, hey, I'm not gonna use those, I want the straight ones so I can get in further. It's just weird, you almost always need the bent tips. Okay, so if you are purchasing a set, we have some links and things, but I don't even know if those links are still on the list. We have so many planes now. Um, okay, so I'm gonna cut this here, this one single zip tie. You do have to cut that to get everything out, I believe. Okay, so just with a pair of side cutters, you can use scissors if you want to. Okay, and then, come on, man. I was just having trouble untangling. There's, there's flaps. There's gear. It does look like we have maybe a little bit less bulk here. 
I don't know if it's just maybe me misremembering something or if Horizon actually noticed that there was a bit of a problem there and that would be cool if they did. Now, you'll notice the cool thing is, if you need to work on this, you can see right to the EDF. That is not necessarily super common. A lot of times there's access hatches that are available, but they, I mean, not every jet is gonna give you that option, okay? EDF jet, electric ducted fan. Is this a first good first plane or uh, first EDF? Um, I would say the F-15 is maybe a little bit better option because it's simpler. Um, obviously the Habu STS, which means safe trainer or something like that. Ugh. This is this is what I remember. This was kind of challenging. We're gonna go downhill this time. See if that helps. I don't know how it couldn't. They're all going through that little square hole. Yeah. Okay. We have to hook all of them to the servos, um, to the uh, receiver. Yeah, I know it's a pain, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, like I said, we have been spoiled with some of those quick decouplers that go into the wings and whatnot. It's like, you know, we put them together, it takes us minutes. So nice. That's why you're gonna want forceps, folks. I'm telling you. Because look, even with that not quite on, look at this. I'm gonna use my forceps just to get the label to line up. Yep. Hope I can drop it down, drop it like it's hot. Okay, wing fits great, no problems at all. Where did those screws go? I only knocked one of them over. That's a miracle of science. How many? Four. There's one over here. Well, there's four on this. By the way, there is an EDF hatch here. Boy, it's nice having all the same length. Yeah. That's so much easier. If only it was always that way. Oh, look. There's actually, I need two more. Uh oh. Because there's six total. Oops, I must have knocked one over. I was just gonna say that's pretty bizarro. We might have to. Do you wanna start screwing those in and then I'll follow? Yeah, I'm gonna screw these in. Camera crew is gonna look for those and then come right back. If in doubt, check your sack. <laughs> Rules to live by. I had one extra in there. Of course. Yeah. You don't want to just leave it hanging like that. No, that's kind of not so good. <laughs> okay, hey guys, if you haven't heard yet, uh, we have some new audio gear coming this week. Mm -hmm. So, but we, we couldn't resist making like six videos. We got to keep, we got to keep the parade running. Otherwise there's going to be a mutiny folks. So anyway, we have uh, new Rhodes mics coming. Uh, they better be as good as we think they're going to be because they were triple the price of the last set. Yeah. And uh, we're excited because we know that you guys really deserve better audio quality. Inside it's been all right, but outside it's been pretty tough. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, good fit and finish there. Then, <laughs> this is gonna suck the film, okay? I hate to break it. Look how much better this lead is. I don't remember that lead being so long. I think it was different length. I think it was different length before. Don't move it. Oh. Okay, what are you just getting foam off of there? Yeah. Um, okay, so we have gear, gear. Um, Okay, so you see what I'm talking about? Like, it's just really challenging to get all this stuff to plug in. You're not gonna see what you're talking about. Flaps. Now I'm just trying to find the labels because the labels are down at the root instead of being out where you can actually see. Ailerons. Well, there's an aileron. There's ailerons. Okay. So I have one that's ailerons. The yellow is toward my belly. I'm gonna find one that says ailerons. Yep, that's throttle. There's ailerons right there. Okay, there's two of them, it's a Y cable. So I'm just gonna plug it in. Okay, so brown is brown. You see why these things are nice? That's plugged in, okay. So now this is just gonna be a process of elimination sort of thing. <laughs> That's an aileron, yellow's toward my belly. Did you hear the airplane? Yeah. Pretty close. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys can hear the manned aircraft going by. Okay, 
ailerons. All right, what's the next one? Um, all right, so these look like they're coming out of the wing, which is good. Gear, yellow toward my belly. That says gear. You can see what I just touched with my index finger, and that's plugged into something already. So this one is not, so I'm going to go ahead and get that to slip out. Yellow is away from my belly, and now it's toward my belly. Okay, just working that through. Grabbing here across the plastic so I don't pinch the wires. Those are small. For whatever reason, they always use super dinky wires on landing gear. And I'm like, why do we do that? Because landing gear are actually a pretty heavy-duty circuit, if you ask me. Maybe it's because they only function a couple of times a flight under normal circumstances. So that's gear. The yellow is away from my belly. Remember, bridging across and in, okay? Okay, so there's those. Just looking, guys, to see what I can find. So flaps is the last one that needs to be plugged in, eh? So I wonder if I have to plug that one in there. Uh, yeah, must be on channel six. And it looks like the brown is going to go toward the tail. If I remember right, you see I've got that flipped over. See, I can click that and it locks. Then it holds onto it for me. Makes it super duper duper nice. Pull this label up just a hair. Yep, that's right. That's got to be where that goes. Remember, that's not to be confused with the bind, the bind plug. Okay, the bind plug is toward my belly. See, it's got a wire going into it. Why is there a wire going into the bind plug? Yeah, sorry guys. Hey, by the way, Horizon, if you're listening, it's nice that you're giving us all these free extension cords as part of our planes. It is very nice. Um, for me, I'm not using the bind plugs anymore. I'm using the bind switch. And yes, kind of much like the smart technology, I was a huge naysayer on that. I remember when I saw the first ad, I said, seriously? You're gonna have a button that I can press when I have my battery dislodged or some stupid thing like that. Well, that's, first of all, that's never happened. And second of all, it's actually worked really nice. It's a lot easier to bind that way. Plus you never have to worry about having a bind plug. Yeah. So, um, as usual, I'm kind of a bucker of all things new and uh, until I really, really find out how much better they are. So that being said, we have one antenna left. We have this big mess of wires. This seems slightly less insane than the last time. I mean, I gotta say, I don't know if they changed anything on that, but it was terrible on the first one. And it could have just been the way I did it too. I mean, it was less experience. I built a whole lot less planes by then. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're just gonna tuck this down here. I do remember kind of tucking it down there. Um, like this, okay? You, got, you gotta kind of figure out a place to put it. I'm gonna try to put it down here. Now the rationale behind putting it down here and then sticking it back here is that there, you know, you're going to be limited on, on whichever way you do it. So just do whatever kind of works better. Okay. I'd be lying if I said I had some better plan or purpose for this. My plan is put it all together, put it in there, then test it vigorously to make sure we don't have anything that disconnects in that manner, because that is not good cable management in general. Like obviously you wouldn't want to do that on a normal circumstance, but I really honestly don't know uh, a better way of doing it. Um, the only one I don't really like is this one. I feel like I could probably bring that over to the other side and I can manipulate this wire for the antenna very carefully. You're fine, but you don't need to move every time I bump you. Here we go. So I'm gonna grab this antenna and I'm gonna rotate around. And you see, I'm just trying to be very gentle so I don't kink it. Then I can take that one gear wire that needs to drop down and then I can drop it over here kind of next to this uh, cabinet of the receiver. See what I'm doing? I'm grabbing that with the forceps and what I can do then is that allows me the ability to kind of squish that in sideways. See, then that gets out of the way totally. It's underneath the antennas and then we only have one little area that's be pseudo vulnerable to damage. I'm actually going to push it back. And then I'm going to slip in here with my forceps and get these wires so that they're just kind of down as far as possible. And then this is still vulnerable because there's not a whole lot I can do about that to the degree that beyond putting something on either side to take the load of the battery bump bumping into it so it doesn't cut off. 
because if it was up to me, this antenna, and, and it is up to me, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna slide this up in here as long as I can avoid getting to the gear housing. That's my goal. I wanna get this out of the way without causing myself extra um, fear of issues with signal. Eh. I've never had an issue with signal on, well, not of recent history. I've had a few times, like in the entire history of my RC history, but nothing with any of the new gear. I know I'm sure there'll be people that are like, oh, I had 17 disconnects and I lost all my aircraft. And it's like, guys, if you're losing aircraft from disconnects, you, you probably had something not quite right. Let's be real about it. Okay. Not that I've never had failures. Not that I've never had dead on arrivals. I show you. Um, okay, here we go. So that's, you see what I've done now? I'm not crazy about that, but it's, it's probably as good as it can be, okay? I don't like the fact that that's there, okay? If this was a perfect world, that would be protected by the case possibly, and you could actually take that out and cut it, but I'm probably not gonna do that to be honest. I'm just gonna make it like something like that. Okay, that is a lot better than it was though. Gotta admit, it's a lot, it's it much improved. Good. Yeah, it's actually not near as bad as I was thinking it might end up given how horrible this bundle is. And I'm sorry guys, I'm trying my best to kind of give you, strike the balance between getting it done and blocking your view totally. But I do what, at the end of the day, I kind of have to see. Okay, all right, so now that we have that ready, we are almost like ready to find that's, that's pretty good. That was actually really quick. If you look outside, you can see it's dark though, which is a bummer. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not really surprised. I am a little bit bummed though, because I, I knew it was gonna be hard to get this all done. Now, we are gonna put some ultra soft uh, wheels on here, but I have to <laughs> bring the wheels out before I can do that. So without further ado, let's talk about batteries, camera crew, what size? Uh, 6S, 30, hold on, turn the page. 3,300. To 4,800. So, is Horizon selling 4,800 milliamp hour batteries? I don't know. I guess I'm not aware of them if they are. That seems like a really strange size. Okay, so 5,000, 4,000, that's a Gen 1, this is Gen 2. This is a 30C, 5,000, 30C. I think we'll just kind of size it with this. 4,000, let's go with the Gen 2. Gen 2 is gonna be better because we have less leads to deal with. Mm -hmm. So I am going to persist on this, on this one, Gen 2 is kind of the way to go. Also, I have Gen 2, I already have some packed. By the way, look at this. This is a 4,000 6S, no puffage. This is a 5,000 30C, no puffage. Granted, I can't honestly say how many times I've used this. I think I could plug it in, it would tell me. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't care that much, so I'm not gonna do that. Uh, 4,000, 4,000, so 4,000 should be allowed, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so 4,000 and 5,000. Now, we do have 100C, 5,000s as well. This 5,000 has 3% pop, let's call it. That's probably because I was extremely mean to it with a plane, possibly flying it 20 or 25 minutes on its maiden. I think it might have rhymed with a Rico. <laughs> I mean, like I was really hard on it. Do you remember that? Do you remember that night? I was that there. That glorious night. Oh. Well, that's the one that's etched into your memory. Well, there's other ones, like the other airplanes. <laughs> um. Two. None of them from like <clears throat> 17 years ago. 17 years ago? What, are we having, is it like our anniversary or something? Not today. You're acting like it's our anniversary <laughs> and you're making me nervous. <laughs> But I know it's not our anniversary, like and I'm not gonna say it either. Just like to make me nervous. Um, okay, so if you'll look here, look how nice that fits, guys. Wow. That's a 5,000. So Horizon, I'm a little bit confused about this battery pack decision. I think the reason you're calling for 4,800 is you probably had trouble getting the CG right, and you're like, we'll just say 4,800. So I guess we'll just do 4,000 6S 50Cs. Sorry, they label. Mm -hmm. Look at this, guys. This that. this one. <laughs> that is annoying. Okay, when you're OCD like us, 
Uh, I mean, obviously OCD enough that we can put everything in our fridge or kitchen. Can I put my batteries in the fridge? No, I didn't. We're running out of room. Do okay. not put your batteries in my fridge. <laughs> okay, fridge. so you want to see why this won't work? Why won't that? Oh, because the candy's not going to go on. Yeah. It's not going to go. It's not going to go. Not without massive surgery. Mm. Unless we push the pack back all the way like we're going to be doing and rest the battery up on top of the receiver, which is a little bit disconcerting because you remember the button? Yeah, the whole button you remember that whole from, from 30 seconds ago, yeah. you remember that one? Okay, so I'm gonna stuff this down there and you may notice that uh, I have a 5030C and it is sitting right there, right on top. And this lead, of course, is gonna have to be tucked over upside down in a goofy way. But then these both are going to really tick me off in about 30 seconds. Okay, now call me crazy, but that battery is technically in there. Now I am binding a little bit, but I remember doing a lot of carving to get to this stage. So without further ado, time for a little CG I was test. just gonna say, we're gonna mark it, right? We are gonna mark it right now, and we're gonna see maybe they really did move things back. 80 to 90 millimeters back from the leading edge at the wing root. Which is another way of saying 80 to 90 millimeters back. But if you really want to be able to flare, you want it to be um, as tail heavy as the plane will fly. Because this thing is super, super stable in flight. Okay, yeah. what are we, 80? Also 80 to 90. Okay. It also specifies with the gear down. With the gear down. Yep. Okay. I'm just saying. Okay. Well, then we will do the radio setup. I'm all excited. We can we, we can, can mark, mark it. it. Yeah. Okay. So zero. Eighty to ninety, you say? Mm-hmm. There's ninety from the wing root. See, this is tough when you get one of these wing boxes like this where you have this ambiguous transition here. Mm -hmm. Like, is that the wing? Is that the leading edge of the wing? Show them what I'm pointing at, please. See, is that is that the leading edge right there? Or is is like where the wing is? Is that the leading edge right there? I I tend to think that we're supposed to go from the actual wing box that's attached to the wing, but I personally I, I'm not hundred percent certain because the drawing doesn't exactly specify because that detail is not really included in the drawing. Yeah, I think I had trouble with this one before. And it's not the first jet to have this issue, guys. I'm just saying it is a little bit challenging. So I don't know if I'm gonna measure, I think I'm gonna measure from here, from where it meets the wing, okay? And then I'm just gonna give it a little poke. And then I'm gonna go, oh, maybe I should like do it at 90, huh? I slipped it a little bit. No, no, it was at 90. And then at 80? Yeah. Okay, so here's 80. And all I'm doing, folks, is I'm just, I'm looking at this and I'm sighting down the length of it. If you put that camera kind of where my eyes are, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. So like right here. You see what I'm doing? I'm sighting down the length of the tool and then I just pierce a little bit. Okay, so you see those nasty marks? You're probably thinking to yourself, that is pretty nasty. And yeah, it kind of is a little bit gross. But then I can feel it with my fingers when I'm trying to do a, uh, a CG test. Okay, so I'm just for ease of filming, I'm gonna flip it around. So 80.7, 80.07, I'm gonna do it exactly the same. Okay, so a little bit of a mark, and then 90. And I must say it is a lot slower to adjust these, but there's a whole lot more precision. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see that camera crew, can you? Mm -hmm. See how I'm lining up, I'm siding, I'm siding down the tip of this. And then these sharp edges are super nice for getting a mark. The trouble is, is, is this where you measure from? Is this where you measure from? Or is that where you measure from? So I'm just gonna go with, this is where I'm measuring from. Now, the good news is when you measure from that point, you're going to be very close still. You're talking about the difference between 
um, on this plane, let's call it maybe five millimeters, okay? So five millimeters, <laughs> it would be kind of unfortunate. I don't think five millimeters is gonna make the plane crash, but it's certainly gonna make a difference in the flight performance. So really then it comes back to where can you, where can you ram the pack as big as you want to get the long enough flight time to enjoy it and then still get that flare on landing, okay? Because flares on landing really help a lot. Uh, this does have flaps, so it helps a lot with slowing down, um, but the flare is the biggest way to slow it down. And I want, I want you guys to see this. I don't remember this here. It, like I said, I'm not trying to sit here and, you know, pretend something that's not true because I honestly don't remember. But this 5,000 is a little bit wider than that opening. I wonder if we could go the other way. Watch this, folks. This lead is a bit longer. I swear it is. Okay. Watch this. See that? Look at that. I don't remember there being any chance of fitting that before. Like, not even remotely. Is it taller now or shorter now? Hmm. I want to see if I can even reach the lead. Well, I can for sure reach it, but can I put the canopy on? Right. That's the question mark. So, folks, why do we care? That's because every jet that you fly, almost every jet is, you always have, you know, the goal is to generally get them back further, uh, which is kind of funny because that's kind of the opposite of most other planes. Yeah. Um, that doesn't quite make it. See, it's a little bit too tall. Okay, see that? Mm -hmm. I don't think you can do it without modifying this. Taking out maybe that back seat, which actually you could do that, Mm. It's a little bit tempting. It'd be quite easy to do actually because there's nice lines to follow. You could just cut this little little area out right here and that would give you the ability to fit that and get it back. But I don't even know if we need that yet. Right. So I'm just gonna push it forward right in front of the receiver but then look what happens. See this? Look at where the battery is. Look at that wire. You see what's happening to the coax cable? If it would focus. You guys see what's going on there? That's what I was nervous about. So really for practical reality, at bare minimum, I want that up on the edge like this. At, I mean, at minimum, I'm not gonna do anything less than this. Cause then it's up over it. Cause then it's up over it, but yeah. then you run the risk of hitting the button. So here's how we're gonna resolve the button pressing issue. Okay, first of all, we're gonna take some hot glue. We're gonna do two drips or maybe four. And we're gonna just put drips on the perimeter of that uh, button so that the battery can never actually depress down onto it because the battery is a flat plane and therefore it can't squish down on it. You could do that with CA, but it'll take forever to dry it and you know root, build up a little bit each time. You do about five or six different drips in the same spot. You get a more permanent bond. The hot glue could pop off of there if it gets really hot during flight. Uh, and keep in mind, these receivers do get a little bit warm. I don't think they're warm enough to melt the hot glue. Okay, so we still have trouble because those connectors are right in the middle, but watch this. You can actually work this connector in here, okay? So once it's landed, then you're talking about extremely minimal modifications to get those wires to fit, okay? I mean, you could get that canopy on now. The canopy is actually really sweet on this. I like it. The pilot looks good. I, they've used this pilot in other planes and I thought his face looked weird. Maybe it's the way they painted it. Mm. Huh, that's pretty cool. So, 5,000, 6S, gear up, I know, I know. It's nose heavy and tail heavy. So in the middle, in the middle. Now, listen, it's possible that they want you to measure back further than I did. So it's possible that I should be measuring from that back hole and then just beyond it. Okay, if that's the case, it's just slightly nose heavy. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say. Because I can't say for sure yet until I fly it. Um, that's good though, show them. But you wouldn't. All I would need to do, all I would need to do is this, watch. When you're loading this pack, okay, here's the trick of the day, guys. You see this, they gave us a pass through for the wires. Okay, so there's a pass through here. So we're gonna have to plug this in in a few minutes, so I'm sort of reluctant to do this right now, um, but we technically can, okay? 
So I'm gonna get this thing level and then plug it in. So hopefully the neighbors aren't doing their binding right now. That's a hilarious they joke. Probably say. You mean the dead ones? Yes. Oh, okay. There's a cemetery next door, guys. Sort say, of. Hopefully, this, is not hopefully, first. hopefully this isn't your first rodeo. Yeah. On Brian Phillips RC. If it is, we live by a cemetery. We live by a cemetery. Okay, so look, wires down. See the wires down? Can you show them over here so they can actually see what's happening? The wires down. See that wire under this lip? Yeah. Wires down. See this? Wires down. Can you see the wires? See this? The wires are down. Okay. okay. Take my word for it. Now I'm gonna slide this back so that I can get that kind of into the position that I want it. And then I'm gonna go up above and then you don't have to worry about any sort of issue with hitting that button because I'm on this back little bump on the receiver right before all the plugs go in. So really then the only thing that you have to figure out is like, do we want this stuff down the side? And if so, how are we gonna do that? Or do we want the wire going the other way? Okay, so look what I'm talking about here, guys. I'm gonna show you. The other alternative, which would work, is you see this second bump here where it says AR631? That's the bump I'm talking about. There's a bump on there. You guys see that? There's a bump on the edge of that. That bump is how we're gonna feed this in. I wanna try it with the wire this way and just see how it works. Okay, so now I'm just up against the leads. Ooh, that's pretty good, guys. That's pretty awesome, actually. That might actually work really good. So this is the sort of thing that, you know, I, it would be kind of nice if I worked through some of these things and then mentioned it in the video. But to be honest with you, the way that we figure it out is the way that you can learn to do it yourself in the future. If you're a new pilot, you have to have somebody sometimes walk you through the first few but you need to learn how to learn, not just know how to copy. Um, at some point, you'll have to kind of figure it out so you can replicate the good results that we find. See how far back that is. We got a little bit of room too. And then, look at that. Okay. Now, I know the gear are up. There's gonna be a very small change in CG because the nose gear is gonna go forward. Oh yeah, that's on the back hole on the front hole, it's, the nose is going up, which is good, that means it's tail heavy. So if it were tested like this, it would be helping us with the flare. That's the whole idea, folks. I am totally fine with that. I feel like that could be the way to go. Um, now, is that the right spot? I don't know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and mark this here, and this will just be like a starting point. I feel like running into the wires, that's a good spot. Okay, and then I use the little arrow to indicate what direction the wires are going. So this is 5,000 milliamp hour 6S 30C. Okay, with the wires going forward. And so that means it's butted up against the actual connectors. Mm -hmm. um, so it might be worth when we're throwing on those four protective hot glue drips to prevent that battery ever coming down and squishing that bind button while we're midair. Which by the way, I don't think it really does anything once you've started it up. I'm not sure how it's handled once you've already initiated safe and started flying, given throttle, all that stuff. I'm kind of guessing it does nothing. Mm -hmm. So, but I don't know that, I've never tried it. So Verizon, you can answer that question for us if you want. Um, okay, so I'm unplugging this right now. And why are you unplugging it, Brian? I'm unplugging it because we have to actually set up a model first. So we'll pause, we'll reset, get all the stuff put away, and then we'll do the radio setup right now. YouTube, we're gonna continue this radio setup. Okay, so this Viper Jet has gone together super easy from what I remember. I remember having all sorts of trouble. It might have just been experience for me, but I think they re engineered this battery area. Mm -hmm. I think they did. I can't say that because I don't remember for sure if they did. I know for sure they switched the receivers. That's all I know for certain. Um, okay, so anyway, and then they also want us to go over these uh, 
basically these Debro um, low bounce threaded wheels. It's supposed to be like way better for landings and stuff. Honestly, we'll put those on. So, 70 millimeter Viper Jet. You ready? I'm ready. So we're gonna click, scroll down to system setup, disconnect RF, whoops, model select, add new model, create. Are you gonna glare or anything? I'm good. Hey, but this would be a good time to remind people that when we're going through radio setup, they can pause. Yes. Slow you down. On the gear in the lower right hand corner as you're sitting looking at your computer screen or your phone or whatever it is, there's a gear, click it, and it will allow you to slow down the play black, the playback on YouTube. So for those of you that are new, we don't go fast to make it hard on you. We go fast because there's people that have been doing it for many, many years that just kind of want to get the information quick. So wrong videos for that, but still, um, they'll probably be watching it in two times speed. So anyway, we get a lot of comments about it. If you're new to the channel, if you have questions, ask and we'll try to help you out. But really the best thing to do is just pause the video or slow it down. Slowing it down helps to pause when you're looking at a screen that you see here. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll try to go in some sensical order, okay? So if you're new to NX8 or programmable, in, uh, programmable transmitters, we'll help you work through it a few times. But to be honest, once you've done it a couple of times, you're gonna catch on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so model select. Um, we're back to system setup, so I hit back. This is a back button. This is the FN button and the escape button. This is called the scroll bar. And then it's also got a button you click, 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 okay, when you push down. Okay, so model type. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna look in that. Um, this is the bind and fly basic, so it doesn't come with a battery, but it is, uh, comes with the receiver, all the servos, all that stuff. And then there's also a plug and fly, okay? This is one of the biggest reasons why you're gonna like Horizon Hobby. Okay, because they're gonna give you these good, this is E-Flight, which is a Horizon Hobby brand. So Horizon Hobby owns E-Flight, it's one of their brands. Just like this is a Horizon Hobby Spectrum receiver, or transmitter, and receiver. It's actually a receiver too for telemetry, okay? So, quick start information. This tells you what you would do if you were doing uh, like a full plug and fly, but it also talks about four minute flight timer. It talks about center of gravity, 80 to 90 millimeters back from the leading edge measured at the wing root. Again, ambiguous ring, wing root does make that kind of tough for us, okay? Then we're gonna talk about Expo. Expo in high rates and low rates, okay? So there's a high rate and low rate output in the dual rates here, so you can see how much deflection you should see. If you're getting a bind and fly basic, a lot of these things are pretty much set for you, okay? So it's very nice, you don't have to do a lot of adjustment here. You just basically set it up and a lot of that stuff will be fairly close. Sometimes you gotta do a little bit of finagling to match this. I don't measure, I don't match, just so you know. What I do instead is I mess with rates and expo. I'll show you how I do that too. Then transmitter setup, it's talking about this in the quick start, which is unusual. Blank acro model, which we already did. Wing type, one aileron, one flap. We'll talk about that in a minute. Servo reversing, gear reversed, all others normal. And then travel adjust all surfaces 100%. That's pretty typical on an AS3X plane. AS3X with safe select, same thing. AS3X stands for artificial stabilization three axis. AS3X. Okay, sometimes I say that out of order and I apologize. AS3X is stabilization. So flying along, you're giving it some yaw, and then the wind comes along and pushes you. Well, it's gonna resist by giving rudder in addition to what you might be giving, or in place of what you're giving, or in place of the absence of your input, okay? There's also some priority between you and between the receiver, and that can be adjusted. Safe is what rides on top of AS3X, and it is called sensor-aided flight envelope. Sensor-aided flight envelope is auto leveling and limited bank angles. But it's really hard to say that. So they came up with this name safe because it seems to um, help people that are new understand that it's like easier to fly or whatever, okay? So sensor aided flight envelope is gonna limit your bank angles so you can't roll the plane upside down easily. And it's gonna limit your bank angles going up and down. That's the pitch axis on your elevator your roll axis on your ailerons, and then your yaw axis is not limited because you're gonna stay flat, but it will limit your roll axis, okay? 
safe. Sometimes uses the, the rudder, depending on if it's a three channel plane or a four channel plane. Most of the time with a four channel plane, you have, uh, you have a rudder that yaws your plane, you have an elevator that pitches your plane, and you have an aileron that rolls your plane and then you have throttle, okay? That'd be a four channel basic plane. This is actually a six channel plane because you add flaps and then gear, and then you have the additional seventh channel for controls for safe select, which turns on and off safe select. There's also some channels of beyond that that are used for telemetry and then forward programming that you don't necessarily even have to know about, but it's happening, not the least of which, um, it, I mean, it, even if you have a non NX line transmitter, if you have just a run-of-the-mill knockoff DSMX transmitter, you're still gonna have the transmission to the DSMX received, processed, but you're not necessarily gonna have forward programming on the knockoff uh, radios, okay? So there are some things that can be done on those, but not forward programming at this point. Nobody's copied it yet, okay? Which would be good if they didn't. <laughs> anyway, at least from Verizon's point of view, I'm sure. Anyway, so we're gonna go back to this and uh, continue. Sorry for the uh, side note. This is what I use here. It's uh, usually like a second page or maybe this is over here and then this is over on the other page. And then we're gonna talk about the save uh, switch designation. That's what radio setup is all about. There is a special area for using safe select with the DX6 and DX6E transmitter. Talks about the different ways you can do that because you have less channels. On an NX6, you have seven channels. Why they called it the NX6 and why they say six channel DSMX 2.4 gigahertz proportional radio system is completely beyond me, but it's seven channels. Take my word for it. This is eight channels, it is not nine. That'd be pretty sweet though. I wish they would have made that same mistake on here. <laughs> not that I care, I've never needed it yet. Okay, going back to the point. So we have a new model set up, so we need to change the model type or the aircraft type rather from wing type, or this used to be wing type, now it's aircraft type. One aileron, one flap, okay? I'm gonna change this image. I think we do have a Viper jet in here. Where are you, Viper jet? <laughs> oh, it's a bummer. What is that? Is that a fishing rod? Not a Viper jet. That's a quad of some sort. But as you can see, there's lots of different things in helicopters and all sorts of stuff. I think I'm just gonna go with, the closest match would probably be something like that, okay? You don't have to change that picture, I just do it. And then we'll have some other channel assignments we might have to do later, but for now, we'll just walk out. We're gonna go into, uh, excuse me, we're actually gonna go back to system setup and we're gonna go to the model name. We always name our models. This is the 35th model. That number will increment. If you copy a model, it's gonna be the same number, but it's gonna be in a different order. You can reorder your models on this transmitter through model um, utilities, which is in system setup there. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here, click it, turns black, and then once it turned black, then you move the cursor to the character you want. In this case, it's gonna be the Viper. And then you just scroll to the letter, click, and then continue on, and that's the way that works. Oops, I made a mistake. So then we'll walk out. We have the Viper 70 millimeter EDF, okay? So now I need to start setting some things in here. So flight timer is supposed to be four minutes. So we'll scroll down to timer. We'll change the five to a four. We're gonna change, are you having glare? I got it, I got it. Okay, active for one out. That means over 25%, it starts the countdown. Scroll a couple menus over. I'm shutting off my one minute warning. I'm shutting off my 20 second warning. I'm turning my voice for 10 seconds to one seconds, and then expiration to tone and vibrate. That's the way I like it. Oh, and then it's um, one minute, every one minute past it beeps, okay? Mm -hmm. But on a plane like this, if you're hearing more than one or two, <laughs> you've already crashed. Already, yeah. <laughs> so that being said, there's also telemetry and audio events in this. So you can set up different warnings that will actually activate based on the conditions of the plane. However, 
on a 631, see there's the timer going, okay? On this plane, there isn't gonna be audio vents for the pack voltage, but you could have an audio vent for your re receiver voltage. Mm. So almost nobody does a receiver voltage um, audio event unless you're talking about a sail plane that's a true, like a pure sail plane, because then you would have an audio vent because that's gonna basically tell your BC voltage, which means you're running out. Um, one gripe I have with the AR631, and I have been asking Horizon about it, is we need pack voltage. That's what people want. I think it's reasonable to get it in there and they're working on it. Because if you can tell what the voltage is of the receiver and you can tell me three axis of gyroscopic impact and all sorts of other ridiculous telemetry that really doesn't do me much good, you can tell me that. Because that's the one I really need, okay? The R637T gives you that and it's full range telemetry. Um, this is flyby telemetry, which means it's like not got as far a range. Okay, that's the way that works. So, but it still has a lot of telemetry. It's kind of incredible the stuff that's going on in there. But I am gonna get back to the point here. So now throttle cut. Throttle cut is always a little bit less of a big deal when you're talking about on a plane with an EDF. Okay, so switch H. So you can look down here, you got a monitor that's live. See how it's not going up? It doesn't change. When you shut that off, it goes up and it works. So we like that, that's good. And then of course we need to set up dual rates and expo and flaps, so we'll go in here. So there's three axis of controls for dual rates and expo, okay? Ailerons, elevator, and rudder, okay? Because those are the three primary flight controls. You need to probably go over here a little bit more. Fun. So ailerons, click. Set it to a switch, switch F in this case. I'm gonna show you what I do. I'm gonna show you why I do it. Start with five, go to 10, go to 20, and then drop the rates down to like 90 or something of the sort. Sometimes if you have a really touchy surface, you might wanna go down to like 75. Okay, this is where I'm gonna start, in the middle. I can go less or I can go more. If it's too sensitive, I can go more. If it's not sensitive enough, I can go less. When I land, I set that new setting to the middle, right? Then you're always set, okay? Elevator, you always give yourself an out. So now I just replicate that for all three control surfaces and you're probably thinking to yourself, well, but Brian, I don't want all three control surfaces working. I got all these switches all over the place. Okay, great. I'm gonna use this for safe on and off. I'm gonna use this one back here for my landing gear, I'm gonna use this for my flaps, I'm gonna use this for throttle hold. I've got an extra switch, an extra switch, and an extra switch, but good luck getting to that one while you're flying. Good luck getting to this one, you probably could. This one's tough to get to even for me. If you're a pincer style holder, you may have an easier time getting to those, but for me, I'm a thumb holder. So that means I fly with my thumbs. The pincer grippers are holding with the back of their hand like this, and then they hang onto the tips of the sticks like this, and they do this, I think that's the weirdest thing ever. Okay, so anyway, all right, now that I've alienated half of my audience or a third of them or whatever, I mean, have you ever seen somebody sit here and play PlayStation like this? Like, hold on, let me, let me hold my controller like this. Do people, okay, so why do people do it? I don't know, I think it's a quad thing. Uh, I mean, there are some legitimate reasons. The guys that fly incredible sailplanes will have rigs that hold this like this. I, I think they call it a chess rig. And instead of just having a lanyard that supports it, they have a whole tray that holds it. They have an armrest on some of the biggest ones and they will be able to do this and they can really be comfortable. They can get to different switches. Mm -hmm. They can do all this stuff. Some of the most expensive radios that are made are set up for that. Mm. It's, just, it's just a preference thing though. I mean, I think on those same radios, you can just hold them like this. My take is I like holding them uh, the way that I'm used to and that's the way everybody wants to do it. That's why we have mode one, mode two, mode three, mode four. Most people mode, mode one or mode uh, two, and we're mode two in the US, most of us. Um, but there's some people that fly mode one, and then there's some people that fly mode three and four, so it just depends. There might even be more, I'm only aware of four. Okay, all right, so getting back to the point, so the third axis of control is rudder or yaw. Okay, so I'm gonna assign that to the same switch setup. And like I said, you can assign them to different switches. I'm just assigning them to the same switch because I want all of them to be controlled on the same switch. And why do we want that? Because I take off in this mode, I can go less sensitive or more sensitive, depending on what I need to get back to the ground. That saturation is pretty tough there, camera crew. Okay, so 
Uh, did I lower that rate? Yes, I did. Okay, so we're ready to, to go on that. Now we just gotta get the flap system set up. So this is, this is where you have a cheat sheet here. We also have to reverse the gear. Okay, so flap system. And you're like, geez, Brian, I thought you were gonna bind this plane. Yeah, we gotta do all this stuff first. It's just easier to do it first if you can. Five. She's counting down, the annoying British lady. Two. Okay, so I'm gonna click, assign it to switch B in my case. They're suggesting this is what we have. So I used to have a DX18, which is pretty cool. So there it is. But now I'm using the NX8. So the NX8 is down here too. Okay, cool. All right, so they're, select, they're saying use switch D. I'm using switch B. Sorry, Horizon. That's the way I've always done it. I recommend that you use the same switches all the time, every time, no matter what. It's so much easier. Just start doing it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I use this switch for flaps. I use this switch for gear. I use this switch for expo and dual rates. I use this switch when I have landing gear for safe select AS3X or other gyro on off options. This is my normal flight mode. This is an off, this is safe. If I have no uh, gear, I use this for safe. If I have adjustable gain, I set it here. I always do the same stuff because when you're flying, it's hard enough to get over here to hit trim while you're flying a jet that's out of trim, let alone going up here to do like a bomb drop or something. Those weird ones are the ones that cause you to crash. I'm telling you, okay? Because things happen in milliseconds when you're flying, okay? You need to be prepared as much as you can. It'll help you be a better pilot. Okay, all right. So switch D, they're saying switch D. I'm doing switch A, uh, switch B. So position zero is minus 100, okay? So we'll just scroll down all the way. Just click and roll the thing all the way over. Okay, then click again. That changes it to white. You can see that. I don't know if I don't ever go over that. I apologize. Now, one gripe I gotta give to Horizon is I've noticed that they have not been doing elevator correction on this. I don't like that. I want the elevator correction. The, the product development team needs to be doing that for us. If it says minus 100, I want it to say elevator minus 7%. Well, now maybe there's no correction needed on this plane. I honestly can't remember. I could get the DX18 out and look what I had. Mm -hmm. But to be perfectly frank, we may not want it now. It may fly a little bit different. Every transmitter is a little bit different, okay? But I'm just telling you right now, that would be nice. PD, you guys should be doing that. Okay. And if it said zero, you would know that there yeah. was no correction needed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's 50. So you'll notice that's not full range. Plus 100, minus 100 would give you full range. In our case, in our case, then I would like to see a uh, full flap deployment. So we'll take a look at that when we're all done, okay? So then you got to go to the switch for speed and you can set it to two seconds as prescribed in the manual. That's right down here. The speed of deployment is two seconds. That's pretty typical. And then you have to flip the switch and then change that again to two seconds. And then you have to flip the switch again and set it to two seconds. And you're like, but that's so weird, Ryan. Yeah, it is. But look, there's a flap actuating slowly. And then you can see auxiliary two is still attached to the switch B up here. See that? We're gonna be using that later, but we'll make an assignment for that later. And then look, switch D, it's not assigned anything, okay? So that's ultimately gonna go back to auxiliary two, okay? So out of there, sir, oops. Servo setup, travel, reverse, gear needs to flip, okay? Also for me, I need to go to system setup, disconnect RF, scroll down to channel assign. Click into channel assign, go down to look at auxiliary two is set to B. Click, change it to D. Then it becomes a D. That's one of the best features of Spectrum radios that I didn't know I was missing until I got it. On my DX18, I went from DX8 to DX18 bill. I started getting that feature and I thought, what a stupid feature. It's so dumb, it's almost as dumb as a smart battery that balances itself. To be able to flip the switch and have it change. It's insane. really nice. It is yeah. huge because otherwise you have to scroll through like 30 or 40 inputs. And by the way, it gets worse when you get more switches because if you only have six switches, it's not a big deal. If you have 40 switches, it's kind of a lot to scroll through. Also, it guarantees that it knows that you're talking about the same switch, Yeah, which is very nice. Okay. All right. So getting back to the point. So we're gonna walk out. Now that doesn't assign it to any particular function, but now when I go to monitor mode, which is just scroll over once, auxiliary two is changing. And now flaps change, and there is no elevator correction yet, but you can see, okay, that's moving at the correct rate. Nothing changes, that changes, 
Nothing is set up yet. This changes from the scroll, from the roller up top, the right knob. Throttle holds on. Get used to using a throttle hold for your safety. Okay, now what are we gonna do next? We're gonna bind. Okay, I want flaps all the way back. I want gear down because I want this to be gear down because that's the way I'm gonna store the plane. When I'm flying, I'll have it up. When I'm landing, I'll put it down. Get used to having them the same way all the time, guys. Otherwise, it is very easy to mix that up, okay? All right, so throttle holds on. I've got this thing ready to go. Now, there is a live bind mode, but I almost never use it. I've had trouble kind of getting it to work, but I have had it work just fine too. So I shut my transmitter off. So it's off. You can tell when the RF is off because this light goes off. You can shut off the RF without shutting off the transmitter, just so you know. Okay, so we are going to bind in safe select active mode, okay? So you can bind with AS3X only, completely ignore the safe select portion, or you can bind in safe select, which makes it on all the time unless turned off. So you can bind with safe select not even being a factor, which means if you have a transmitter that doesn't have the channels to turn it off, and you know you're not gonna use it, don't bind that way, bind the AS3X way, which is a different procedure. That is outlined on this page. I always bind and take advantage, okay? Here's the two different methods. See how there's a button there? This is if you have a, a bind plug. So there's actually four. This is if you just have the button. In our case, we're gonna press that button, click, listen for the click, do it, practice, make sure you know what it feels like. Then we're gonna hold it, after we've plugged it in and we're gonna keep holding it and we're gonna keep holding it, we're gonna keep holding it, then we're gonna press this button, then we're gonna turn it on. It's kind of a thing, it's hard to do, okay? Cause you're pressing a lot of push buttons. Push buttons are hard because you have to brace it against your body and you don't wanna drop your transmitter, okay? For most of you guys, it's like your baby. I have four kids. But you still know you'd rather not drop the transmitter. Yeah, me too. Okay, so. I'm gonna to try to show you what I'm looking at. You guys hear that? Mm -hmm. Make sure that the way you're going to press is gonna make the battery contact. You don't need the battery in the right place for your CG at this point, okay? So just get it so that it works, get it so it's out of the way, but just keep in mind that some of these bigger batteries are a little bit hard to plug in. Okay, so I'm gonna press that button and plug it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna plug it in. On the, on the first time you can press it, after you plug it in, okay? So once you get that battery plugged in, okay, so it's in. Now, there's no lights on because it's not bound yet, okay? I'm gonna press and hold that. Listen, just clicked. Now I'm gonna press and hold this, push it against my hip, and then press and hold the power and then let go. Oops. Then I let go. Two dances. Two dances means you're in AS3X mode. If it only dances once, ch -ch -ch -ch, that's once. Ch -ch -ch -ch, ch -ch -ch -ch, that's twice. So all of it goes through that dance twice. Then the ESC arms. That's the noises you want to hear. Okay. If you only hear it once, you're in AS3X mode. It's super easy to just redo it. If you made a mistake, that means that you let go prematurely. Then you came over here and you pressed and held and then turned it on. That's the binding procedure if you want to do it with AS3X only. Now, uh, first things first, let's look at our control surfaces. Elevator up, elevator down. Check the controls on both sides because this is two different servos. Up, down. Rudder left, rudder right. Roll left, roll right. Now you'll notice there's not much deflection. That's because we're in safe. Okay, flaps down, full flaps. Oh yeah, nice. Okay, now watch where our gear are. We are in a dangerous spot for the gear. So I gotta move those back a little bit. Make sure we're gonna clear. We are not gonna clear still. Gear, cycle, that's up, that's correct. Oh yeah. Now test the steerable nose here. It's going the correct direction, which should be the opposite direction of the rudder. So that yaws the aircraft the same direction. I, did that make sense? The way I said that? Yes. See the landing gear? They have these coily springs. They work okay, but let's be honest, guys. If you're hitting hard enough to bend that spring, you're probably breaking out of the bottom of the foam first. Okay, my experience is, and I hit my plane hard on the first few landings, because I was trying to land it on a basketball court. 
It was a little bit tight. Oh, yeah. You remember that? That was that long ago. Oh, it's been forever. Wow. Isn't that weird? We filmed this plane in our old house on our kitchen island, just like this. And it just seems like literally forever. Oh, that fits perfect. Okay, cool. That works. So now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about safe. Safe is on, technically. Okay. What's the aileron doing? The ailerons are trying to find the quickest route to level. Yep. Okay. Now what's the elevator doing? Look at the elevator. It's pointed up. What's it doing now? Down. No. Well, it's trying to push you back up. The elevator's pointed down, which is trying to restore right. level flight. Now, watch this. Full rudder, or excuse me, full aileron roll. Watch what happens. See, it stops. There. Jeez. That's a lot of limited bank angle. Yeah, it is. See that? That's the other limit. Okay? Now watch the elevator. Same thing. I just don't want the battery to fall out. Okay? So I'm holding down the battery. Full up elevator. That's as far as you can go up. You see how it stops working? Okay? The nose drops down. Look, it goes back up. All the way down. See? That's as far down as you go. So, when you're in C, you are limited in both your bank uh, your roll, your pitch, but your yaw is totally, you know, up, up to you. Uh, there are lower rates though, so keep that in mind. Lower rates and limited rates means when you take off and you're like, I should have no problem making it over this tree, except that, <laughs> except that what's going on? A million pieces later. Okay, all right. So now let's shut off safe, and I'm gonna show you how to do that so that it is assignable, okay? There's a switch. I'm just gonna show you the instructions so that I can show you what's wrong with them. Okay, see that? See how it says five times? This is in every bind and fly since like the Spitfire when they first did, you know, put out the AS3X um, safe select, yep. okay? So I'm gonna use the switch I wanna use right here. Six down and in. One, two, three, four, five. Keep going, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. See how it's switching? It's already working, okay? When it starts switching, it's working. But Brian, it says five right on the paper. They mean one, two, three. I find that really confusing to people because you have a three position switch. Good luck explaining that to a noob. One, okay, great. But that's a two position switch, it's easy. Well, I got three positions. Is this one? Is this one? No, this is one. So I count one, two, three, four. If you were using the knob, which you could technically do, one, two, three, okay, you get the point. So, safe is on or off, I don't know, how do I tell? Flip it over, watch the ailerons. It's off, off. it's not trying to find the quickest route, now it's on. But Brian, I thought you said that you wanted, I thought you said that you wanted safe in the down condition, you wanted just AS3X here, yep, you're right. So I'm gonna click, go to servo setup, go to travel, highlight it, move over to reverse, click again, then I'm gonna go to the control surface, I'm gonna look at, that's auxiliary two, I'm gonna flip it. Now I'm done. So, safe is off, nothing's happening, that's because I haven't given 25% throttle. You have to give 25% of throttle outside of throttle cut and actually make it spin so that that activates your ASTRIX, unless your ESC's unplugged, okay? Uh, just for grins and giggles, let's go ahead and get this battery in here. Okay, so obviously we're not gonna be flying now because it's dark. <laughs> Uh, but you guys have already seen it, which always puts us at a disadvantage because you guys are watching, knowing how well or not well the plane went. And uh, we're just sit sitting here thinking about how great we think it's going to go. Okay, so the wires are, this is so much better than the original one. I don't know what they did or if it's just the batteries, but I can tell you one thing. Look at this strap. This strap is loose. That strap needs to move back. It's going to have to move back. We'll show you how to do that. That's one thing we gotta remember, hon. Yeah. Okay, stick the canopy in. Clicks in, which is awesome. Okay, now, I'm just gonna warn you right now. If you depend on this latch to hold your battery, which you think it will be perfectly fine until you're doing some high G cornhole and the battery goes boop. Okay, don't be that guy. It was me. Okay. All right, so elevator, okay, here we go. Okay, try to hold back on. 
Now watch, the S-Trex is working. See the rudder? It's moving to the left, it's moving to the right, my left or right. Aileron up, aileron down, very hard to see. If you can't see, put your hand on it. You can feel it. When I lift, it goes up. When I lower, it goes down. It's hard to feel the down. When I lift, it goes up. When I lower, it goes down. When I go this way, it pushes against my fingers. When I go this way, it pulls away from my fingers because I'm on this side of it. When I go up, it goes up. When I go down, it goes down. When I go up, it goes up. When I go down, it goes down. Now, what I, what I usually do is I look down the length of the plane and I look at the rudder and then I go like this. Are you in focus? I do that. Can you see it in camera? Not really. Maybe a little bit on it. See the rudder? Yep. I'm looking down and I watch for the rudder to go like this. Mm -hmm. Left, right, left. Mm -hmm. If you can't get it to go, you sometimes have to turn the gains up, okay? So I'm gonna watch that and I'm gonna spin it. Whoa, cool, I can definitely see it. If in doubt, verify. If this is a plug and fly and you're setting up an AR636, excuse me, an AR631, and you're doing the forward programming, verify that it's working the right direction. You will lose your plane, more than likely, you're gonna have your ailerons off, and you're gonna take off, and it's gonna go just like this. It's gonna be like, Brian, you explained exactly what happened to my plane. I know, because I hear about it all the time, and it's happened to me before. Okay, you take off, and you're like, whoa, that looks so good, and then the first gust of wind is gonna come like this, and it's gonna push you just a little bit, and guess what's gonna happen? Instead of correcting, it's gonna exaggerate, and bam, a million pieces. And you're gonna be like, I don't know what happened, Brian. What do I do now? Well, you fix it. Yeah, but I don't know what I did wrong. I don't know what you did wrong. Question. Yeah. What? Question. If you're verifying. I'm sorry, I was paying attention. And you can feel it go up, but you can't feel it go down. If you can verify one, I mean, usually. It's usually pretty obvious. I feel bad. If you can. Is it right? Like if you can verify one direction, it's obviously gonna go the other direction, correct? It will be true on a surface that is one servo. Okay, most control surfaces are mechanically linked, but occasionally you'll have a servo that's installed backward. Now, that would be true for both output from your control and the AS3X, where you wanna be super, 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 super careful is when you are setting up the transmitter and receiver by doing forward programming yourself. Mm -hmm. If you do it and you mess up, then you take off, the yaw is backward, the plane is gonna yaw, but you can probably land it. If your elevator is backward, you're gonna give it input, it's gonna fight you. It will feel like it's dead on the sticks and then as soon as you let go, boom, right in the ground, I guarantee it. Then if your ailerons are flipped backward, I'm talking about just the AS3X. You move the sticks and it moves right, okay? It goes the correct direction. But then when you let off the sticks, then the priority is then handed off to the receiver for AS3X to take over. That's when it's gonna flip it and crash it. And unfortunately, if you turn safe on and you have it set up backward, it will flip upside down. And it will fly level upside down, which is kind of cool actually. Um, except for when the, it immediately crashes, which is what's gonna happen, I promise. Okay, anyway. That's a lot of morbid talk. Let's hope that never happens to any of you guys. All right, now that we're out of safe, elevator up, watch this. Look how much it moves. Come over here. You see how much less it moves? Just move this out of the way here. Okay, so elevator back, safe. See how safe limits it? Now let's look at the roll, safe. Normal, AS3X, safe, okay? Now let's look at the rudder. Rudder. Safe. I want to show you that now because this is beginner enough plane that you could be flying this and you could be a little bit green. I kind of hope you're not because this plane is maybe not like the easiest plane to fly, but certainly not the hardest plane to fly. I feel like the F-15 is easier than a little 64 millimeter, single 64 millimeter, it's not a twin. That plane is pretty easy to fly. It's got fixed gear. I hate fixed gear on jets, I agree, but that plane is really fun. And we crash it into a tree immediately on Maiden if you want to watch us and laugh with us, at us. So, what we're going to do on this plane, where was I going with that? Oh, this is, this is not like maybe the easiest jet, yeah. but it's actually one of the easier jets. Here's why. Because now that they evidently have allowed more room to get the center of gravity right, which is awesome by the way, we did not have that before. The first time I did this plane, I had a heck of a time getting the center of gravity right. 
This is way better. I'm super happy because if you can get the center of gravity back far on this, you can flare for landings and it will make it so much easier to land. And you can slow down the plane and minimize the rollout. Now, compared to the F-16, 80 millimeter, this thing is going to be so easy to land. And uh, the F-16 has like a 600 foot rollout, 600 to 900 foot. I'm not exaggerating, by the way. And that's if you get a, like a perfect greasy landing. Um, if you get a really good flare on it and you have a nice headwind that's like, you know, 30 knots, um, which would be like, you know, like 40 <laughs> miles an hour, then yeah, and I know I didn't do the math right, but it's good enough, okay? So everything is where it needs to be. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to put on the wheels while we can easily flip this. Okay, these wheels are something that comes on high recommendation. Yes, Horizon sent them. They wanted me to tell you about this. This wasn't like just in my head. Um, these things are low bounce. I would have preferred smaller ones for the nose gear because I think this big nose gear is kind of ungo. But look how hard these are. Come over here, grab them. Look how hard it is. I mean, normally that's, you know, you know. Now feel how soft oh, this is. These are way softer. Mm. Usually isn't. Feel the harder one. I think the harder one is supposed to be. See, what, all what? I'm gonna say is that these things are gonna make the landings a lot better. That's what everybody is telling me. And I'm like, you know, to be perfectly honest, I didn't have a big problem with them. Okay, I have a question. Look how pretty they are though. What? They're really squishy. What they are, are they? Are they just foam? They're or rubber with foam. These are Debro. Debro's been making these for 157 years. Literally. Like literally, they were making these before the Wright brothers came out with their plane. <laughs> they were like light wheel, lightweight wheels for your RC aircraft. All right, wait, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Nothing. So the camera crew had an, a question. It was a tremendous question and she was ashamed to ask it. <laughs> was it? Her question was, do we need to fly this first and then fly it with these second? Well, I mean, to be perfectly frank, I don't really care. We can fly it with or without, but Horizon sent these, they want us to try them out. Okay, okay so we're gonna try them out. That being said, I, I don't have like a huge problem with these wheels. I feel like they're okay. Um, I, I just know that a lot of people have had trouble with them. They feel like this plane has a tendency to bounce on landing. I don't remember having that problem. I remember having it roll out forever though. So these softer wheels do slow down the landing a little bit quicker, which is good. And that could be handy on the F-16 too. So anyway, I'm just ripping these out. And uh, I did notice that they look a lot more scale too, which is cool. Yeah. Now, yeah. there is one thickness issue that you have to deal with. So I'm thinking that RTL fasteners is gonna come in to help on that. So what oh. we're gonna do is we are gonna work on these snap rings first. I don't know what size I wanna use, but my experience has been, I don't have a snap ring removal tool that works really good for this. So the snap ring is this thing, okay? If you guys wanna work, or snap clip or whatever you wanna call it. I need to be able to reach it though. We do. So 0.7 millimeters here. This is the way I do it. It's quite easy if they're small. They will shoot across the room, so don't lose it, okay? If you lose it, you can't put your wheel back on, okay? See how I push that out, and it's almost kind of got a bend in it? <laughs> Did you see it? You lucked out. I lucked out. You see that? Now it's on my paper, so I can see it really good, okay? Then this slips right off, okay? So that's super easy. Now let's look at this and study it. This is a little teeny tiny bit narrower from what I've been told. I don't know if that's true, but you have to kind of shim that out. Otherwise this thing's going to walk. Okay. So I'm kind of thinking to myself, self, how do you want to do that? I think what I can do is I can do some washers. That's what I'm going to try first. So let's let RTL fasteners come to the rescue. We got some stuff from RTL. I'll bring it all out there, camera crew. Okay. So RTL Fasteners is a small company we've been working with, and they sent us these things uh, to you know, basically help get the word out that they exist. And so when we run into the rare opportunity to work with a company that's not just selling some random like bird thing, that's cool. Oh. Yes, bird thing. Yeah. Sorry, she... Hmm, that's weird. I wonder what's supposed to be in that. Mm. I don't know. I haven't seen anything besides uh, screwdrivers, right? Screwdrivers in there for huh. a really long that time. That is so weird. So anyway, getting back to the point, RTL Fasteners is a company that we work with. They sent us these uh, to show you guys how awesome they really are. And to be perfectly honest, we've had very good luck with them. They've saved our tail on at least two projects so far. The F-16. Really? The F-16 was a big saving, saving grace there. We were able to um, redevelop 
the shaft that comes out of there because I had basically tried to land it on our short runway and I, I couldn't get it to stop no matter what I did. I actually had a couple landings where it was okay, but then ultimately I ended up breaking the pin off. I got it straightened out once, but then I had to put in and I put a threaded replacement mold, which is a really cool idea. So anyway, there's a metric kit and there's a standard kit. The metric kit is uh, numbered kit number 743. So it comes with like all the metric stuff that you see here. It comes with these two plastic cases. It comes with tons of this little stuff, which is super nice. Uh, yes, you do have to take them out of the bags. I put them in these little um, plastic cases, but it did come with the cases. And then it comes with some of these super nice, high quality ball and drivers, which is super nice. So these, all these different sizes. So obviously if you go to RTL, uh, dot, rtlfasteners.com, you can uh, use a coupon code. I think it's like Brian30 and you get like 30% off mm -hmm. your order. Yep. Which is a pretty big deal because fasteners are not cheap. In case you guys didn't know that already by like having bought, bought a fastener oh, once. Yeah, never. Um, so if you get this many of them, it's a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. So, but you can save 30% if you use that coupon code. Plus you'll be helping to support our channel and that is much appreciated. So just looking at the different sizes here, they have a million of them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, I think I'm gonna try to go for the standard size here. There's some in here that look like 50 pieces of number zero flat washers. Those look like they're probably a little bit too small. Let's try them. The thing I like about this is I just have the kit and I just come in here, grab what I think I need, and then I go to town. I don't have to know what size it is, okay? That's mm -hmm. too small. I find it to be an extreme pain in the butt to have to know what size it is and to get the calipers out and then you go and then you measure it and then you go out and you go to your toolkit. Okay, so this one here is the number two flat washers. I think this one's probably still too small, unfortunately. And then you get out there and you measure it and then you're like, hey, it's still too small. Show yeah. them. Can you show mm -hmm. them like the other side where they can see what's going on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that doesn't fit, okay? So we gotta go up one more size. Now I also have metric too if these none of these fit. That's why I love this kit so much. So this is number four flat washers, 100 pieces. So you get quite a few of them too. It's not like you're gonna get two. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they have some nut zerts and things in here. Okay. And you just kept the labels from the mm -hmm. bag. See how that slides all the way down? So that's gonna be a no-go. So we're gonna have to figure out a way to get that to not slip all the way around. Okay. So I think what I'm gonna do, I think I actually have a brilliant plan that's gonna work really nice. Now let's try a nut. A nut might give us what we need here, okay? Let's see, nope, that doesn't work. Um, okay, so what about the bag there, camera crew? You, all of the bags were labeled and as you were putting them in the little containers, oh, yeah, you just I cut, cut them. the label off mm -hmm. if you care to know, to be able to go back. And so like I kept that washer them. too, by the way, hon. Oh, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to the metric side and try one of those nuts because they have a few more different intermediate sizes. So these are nylocks, but I want to see how that fits. Too small. Okay, so it looks like probably if you guys, ooh, these metric washers might be better because look at the, the metric size is different than the standard size. The whole to body ratio is different. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just want to see how that fits. That's a pretty good fit there. Look at that. But then it's a little bit smaller too compared to the standard here. This is the number four standard compared to the, yeah, see there's more slop on that. So the metric actually fits a little better in this application. And is that gonna slide over the? I think it will, absolutely. But here's what I'm thinking. I'm trying to figure out if I can use another tool in tandem with that. Hmm. And the tool I have in mind is actually quite simple. Zip tie. Yeah, I think a zip tie is what I want to try into. So we are going to look for a zip tie, just a small zip tie. I don't know if this is going to work for sure. But I know that you guys have this sort of stuff sitting around, so it's kind of nice if you can use it. Okay, so I want to see. And then that, that washer should give us some protection. All right, let me just slide that on now. Show them from the side there. Ooh, yeah, that's gonna be a good fit. Then what we can do is we can take that and we can really get that thing pushed where we want it. Hmm, I'm not sure if that's the right move. I'm not sure yet. See how it wants to, it, it doesn't, doesn't wanna slip down easy, but it could slip down easy. 
So I'm not sure that's the right move. So we'll pause that and we'll come right back. Okay, so I found a solution to the problem. Um, I searched high and low and I found a bunch of different things that would work, but I was like, I don't wanna use those things on this application. So here's what I found out. Can you come over here where you can see what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. See this? Those are lock washers or spring washers. This is magnetized by the way. So what I did was I took the metric washer, which was number, I believe that was this size, which is the M2.5 washer size. I'm gonna verify that right now. And I took one for the front and one for the back. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry, that might've been M3. Is it going on? No. No. No, it's, well, it, it's possible. I'm sorry guys, that was M3 washer. The M3 flat washer, because the fit was better, it was tighter, and he used one of these spring washers, and it just was just tight enough that I could slide it on there and it kind of bit as it went. See this? It's got resistance, so I have to mm. push kind of hard. So that's ideal. Now, that was a happy accident, so that prevents it from making it around the bend, which worked out perfect. Then I found the M3, so that was a number four standard size. Then this is a number three metric size washer. Then I slide the wheel on and just look how smooth it is. Then I'm gonna take another one of these washers. Actually, you know what? We'll probably just keep it simple, stupid, which I'm really bad at. No, we're gonna push it in just a hair. See that? Put the washer, and then we can get our spring clip like this. That's the thing that shut off at me earlier. Did you pause? No. I was just picking it up for you. I know, but we lost the washer again. Oh. Okay, so we have the washer on there. So now I have to get the spring washer. We did find it, which was a miracle because it's a very dinky. Now this is where I need the camera crew to actually help me keep an eye on this. Because see how small that thing is? It's gonna be really crappy when we drop that on this counter. There's the other one I dropped. Yeah. So these things are a real pain in the neck to get on and off. So usually what I do is I try to push the wheel out and then use that to retain where the clip is lined up and then I push them on if I can get so lucky as to push them on right, okay? So you can see why I needed the metric one here because that metric one doesn't have quite as much slop, okay? Mm -hmm. Oh wait, that is the metric one. So the standard one would have been way worse. <clears throat> Okay, so this I need to try to just, it's so small. Those spring clips are a real pain. Okay, so try to find the groove. Okay, so I'm gonna slide that so it's kind of pointed the right direction. See what's happening with this? It's wanting to slide down onto the groove where the, the spring oh, clip is supposed to, go. supposed to go. That's why I keep having trouble with it. So there it goes, popping off again. This is one of those steps where it's much easier said than done. It's not actually a hard step, but it's hard to do in practice. We're gonna get a tool. I can't pause for it. Huh? I can't pause yet. Okay, so I've got that clipped on there. So that's holding that. This is where forceps really come in handy, but they can still pop out and shoot across the room. So you need to be prepared to, to deal with it if that happens, okay? Oh my goodness. Those little spring clips can be such a pain and they can be so not of a big deal. It just depends on the day, it depends on the spring clip. Oh 
Okay, so I think that's locked in there, but it's really honestly kind of hard to tell. So I have to look at it from two or three different angles to make sure that we're pushed all the way down this way. Okay, so there you have it. So now, now we just repeat, but you can see now we can slide this over. See, there's a little bit of pressure on it and then just wherever we want it to be, we push it over and that's exactly where it should stay. And give an extreme close up of this. This is a spring clip right there. You're gonna to have to go to the bottom so they can see it. Yeah, I'll try it from down here. You guys see what I'm talking about? That's your actual spring clip right there. That is the nature. That's the, what is allowing us to clip on there. Is that that spring, you can zoom that back out there, camera crew. That spring allows it to have just a little bit of torsion load on it so it stops it from moving in and out. Mm -hmm. It's just a happy, lucky detail. Now, if you don't have this size, this size happens to be, this is called a split washer. This is part of the variety pack 9155 from the fastener kit. So just go to RTL fasteners, look up kit number 9155. You can use the coupon code that's like Brian30 or something like that. It's right in the description below. Okay, when you, you just go to checkout and then you put that in and they give you the discount, okay? Um, this is one of the products within the kit, okay? So it came with a hundred of these. Looks just like that, okay? So then the alternative one, the other one I'm using is out of the metric kit. So this is an M3 flat washer. There was 50 pieces of them and that's the part number on that one. Can you see that? Is it all in focus? Mm -hmm. Then this is the other one, if you didn't already see that. I got that one. Okay, so that's part of the kit 9155. The metric one is part of kit number um, 743, okay? All right, so now we have to replicate that on the back. I This build had been extremely simple until we did this. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure that it's really maybe as hard as we're making it, but I don't really know how you make it a whole lot easier. You have to have the things on there, right? Am I like overthinking this or something? I don't think so. And to be perfectly frank with you guys, there's a reason I don't switch out tires and things like that because every single time I do it, I lose a snap ring or it's a huge fiasco. But if you're gonna do it, we'll link to those tires, okay? So then you can spin the tire once it starts, then you just don't want it to shoot across the rim. This one was better to me. Yeah. So then you can pull this off. Now we're just gonna verify that everything fits because just cause somebody thinks they're gonna fit doesn't mean they're gonna necessarily fit. These are different wheels, okay? So we're assuming these are the same size, but we're gonna verify that right now. So the same snap ring on this shaft is going to go see how it's a little bit hard to get on there that's exactly what you need which is perfect so that was similar to the first one yes okay. then the washer again that's a standard spring washer then a metric washer then the two inch debro wheel and if you can tip your plane at an angle like this, it keeps it all from falling off. Mm -hmm. So now it looks like this back one actually might not be as bad for spacing, which is really good actually, because maybe you won't even need those on the back. Because yeah, that's what I was talking about. See that wheel's got... So in measuring this side to side, that is 19.52 millimeters. And then in measuring this side to side, that's only 16.77 millimeters. So the reason we test things is because things don't always work out the way we expect. So the good news is you really only have to do that on the nose gear, I believe. So let's verify that theory. So I'm gonna take this back off. That's why we film stuff so you guys don't have to figure it out. Okay, so that goes on. That's a pretty darn good fit there. Okay, then I can put my snap ring back on. 
I hope the camera crew is like pointing from an angle that you can actually see here. It's so hard to get this stuff because my hands are always in the way when we're doing things like this. Okay. So I'm gonna basically snap this on here so that this stays right where I expect it to be. Okay, see how I'm biting onto that? But I don't wanna obstruct its ability to actually hold it in position. Okay, so you see how this has snapped a couple of bites on there? Then I can put this on, and it's not like it has to be all the way on, it just has to be lined up a little bit. Then, you can usually get it to pop on there. Of course, this is where it's, this is where it's very hard to explain to people on camera just how frustrating it is to film stuff that's super simple. And yet it's very helpful to have somebody else kind of show you along the way. Okay, so you push that on. And then I have this other really little tool that I can use to help guide it on. So as I let go, I can slip that down. Luckily, these are magnetized lightly. So I'm just having a real heck of a time getting those things back on. So, and for all of you guys that are at home saying, well, nobody else said they had a problem with this, that's because they didn't film it. Okay, they had a problem with it, they just didn't film it. They dropped their snap ring 100 times too. They just didn't show it. We're showing you the way that it goes. Okay. So then you can make a value judgment as to whether or not it's worth the frustration factor, which is definitely real. But when I have a glorious greasy landing, then this will all be forgotten. I hope. All right, we're going to pause it. I can't handle this anymore. So we took off the mains. We took off this, this nose gear. And I just want you guys to see there's a little bit of a disparity, a difference in size here, okay? So that's part of the reason why we were able to get away without adding any sort of bushing material here or one of those snap rings or spring rings or whatever you wanna call them, spring washers. But up here, this one we had to add a little bit to keep it from going back and forth. Also, these aren't gonna be as critical because they are mains after all, okay? You don't want them to drag a bunch but the thing is, I think we're going to be okay. The steerable nose gear is going to be a problem if it drags against that side. It'll slow you down. Let's see if they collapse. So I think we're good on that. That was a bit of a thing, guys. I did not think it was going to be such a pain, but it was. Even with the RTL fastener stuff, that was a pain. Thank goodness we had it. And even with that whole kit, we only had like two solutions, okay? So those low bounce tires are gonna allow us to, basically when you come down, it's gonna take a little bit of the load, okay? And that's gonna help. I'm still not sure if I have to pull these off and maybe put a snap ring on I might do it off camera just because I noticed that this can actually rub up against there. My thought is if you're landing and it rubs on the left side and not the right side, then it could yaw the craft and it could cause a little bit of an issue. I don't know if that's gonna be an issue. I think more than likely what it's gonna do is just slow the plane down really quick because that wheel might bind, this wheel might not. But I feel like they're still in line enough and you see there's some resistance there. And if I get it in the right position, I just feel like you're never really gonna be in that position where it's gonna be just one side or the other. Mm. So anyway, that's my take on it. Like I said, this came on high recommendations from a bunch of different people that have done it. Everything fits nicely. If we got ourselves a little bit smaller tire, this would disappear. Now, by the way, this is the same exact size as the nose gear, the mains are a little bit bigger than what we were placed into, okay? Very excited to see this thing fly. I've already seen one of these Vipers fly in the 70 millimeters. Loved it, very good plane, one of my favorites. 
and I can't wait to see this one fly again. The batteries are so much better fit. Guys, if you wanna help support our channel, there's five different ways you can help. First, like the video, subscribe, click the bell for notifications, buy stuff from the links, and come back for more. We will have links to this plane. We'll link to both battery types that we talked about, which is the 4000 Gen 2 50C, 100C, 30C, and we'll also link to the Gen 2 5000. This happens to be a 30C, but we'll link to the whole slew of them, and you guys can decide if you wanna spend a little extra cash. Anytime you're getting batteries specifically, purposely for an EDF jet, I recommend the higher C packs. The higher C packs may not be required, but it's going to help. And so I would highly recommend that you consider them for the extra few bucks uh, per, per pack. Plus then if you get a, a jet in the future that needs some 50C or 100C um, ratings, then you can use those. You can always use the higher C packs in the lower uh, applications and they will work better. So you can use the lower C packs um, on you know the prop planes and then if you get the higher C packs, they're typically gonna work really nice on the jets. And then you can also use those in the lower C applications like your, you know, um, your regular prop planes and simpler planes like that. The catch is they're a little bit heavier, they're a little bit bigger. So proximity wise, they may not fit as good sometimes, but if you get the higher C pack, you're gonna get less puffing, you're gonna get higher discharge rates, a little bit more oomph worth of power when you're flying these things. So that being said, we'll go ahead and let you guys make that decision, obviously. And then the, the Debro uh, low bounce wheels, which is pretty cool. They, they seem to be a nice fit. They look nice on there too. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy about that. Um, it was a pain to put them on. <laughs> I didn't think it was gonna be such a pain. Thank goodness we had the RTL fastener stuff. We have links to RTL fasteners too, by the way. It's just below our main links, which have this. Um, it's actually not a link, it's just a, just a coupon code. And I think we have the link to the homepage or whatever. Mm -hmm. You just go there and look for what you want. Also, if you guys are looking for something, you wanna buy something that we've reviewed in the past, but you can't find it on our list, that's okay. You don't have to find the exact item. We have master links to all the different companies that we work with below. And that is one of the best ways you can help support us. Just you know, navigate to Horizon Hobby from that master link and then you can buy whatever you need and you don't pay any extra, it just helps us to get a little credit on the purchases you make. And also, when you guys watch us flying, or if we help you along with your radio setup, or maybe how to you know, set up Safe Select, or just simply learning how to get into the hobby, those are the types of things we do on this channel, so obviously come back for more if you're into that. Uh, we have all sorts of new releases that we get, early releases, so we bring those to you so you can get an idea of what to expect when you pre-order it for yourself. Obviously, we're super excited to be able to bring those things to you and we build clout with our uh, companies that we're working with by having you guys buy stuff through our links. They know that you're watching our videos. You know that you like our stuff because you're going out and supporting us in that way. So that really does help. It's not just a money thing. Although it is a money thing, we don't have a Patreon begging site yet. We may do that at some point, but for the moment, we're gonna try to stay true and clean as a pure driven, wind driven snow here, sorry. <laughs> clean and pure as the wind drum and stuff. <laughs> and uh, keep away from the Patreon just quite yet. But at this point, we really appreciate you guys. We've got literally, today is Tuesday, June 8th. You're probably not seeing this video on June 8th, obviously, because we're just filming it today. Uh, you may not be aware of this, but sometimes we film videos and it's weeks in advance. Sometimes it's months in advance. It just depends on the situations we're working through. And uh, in this case, we have our silver play button coming tomorrow, which is pretty cool. So that's for the 100,000, it's in recognition of 100,000 subscribers. Uh, we're verified, we have access to uh, live help on YouTube, which is actually kind of a big deal when you get a bigger <laughs> channel because you run into situations sometimes that call for live help and they actually do help, which is really cool. So if that's something you're striving for, that's something I didn't know was gonna happen and I've already used it once and the first time was to just ask about the silver play button because you're supposed to get a notification and evidently like nobody ever gets it for a while and then you get it randomly. Well, anyway, we got our email today that showed the UPS tracking for the actual silver play button for Brian Phillips RC, which is pretty cool. And that award is not just for me, that's for me and Megan. Um, mm -hmm. Megan tolerates a lot, our camera crew, our wonderful camera crew, my wife of how many years? A long Almost time. 17. 17 years, yeah. 
It's been a long time. But we've known each other for how many years? Since like, like 20. It'll be 20, yeah. 20 years. So anyway, she has been dragged along for this amazing ride and she's loved every second of it. Oh, every, every single, single second of oh, frustrating yeah. Debro tire installation. And every single dynam, she has loved every second of it, producing these videos for you guys in the YouTube world. But really, we couldn't have done it if you weren't watching. So we wanna thank you again for being part of our little community here. And as this community gets to being not so little, we really appreciate you. You've helped us to turn this hobby, something that we love into something even more than, you know, what we thought it was gonna be when we started filming on our Galaxy S3 so that we could save memory on our USB stick or memory card or whatever it is. And uh, it just kind of turned into a thing. So guys, we love that you're coming back. Please keep doing it. We'll try our very best to keep up with comments. It's getting a lot harder. Uh, we are not neglecting you, we promise. It's just that like there's only so many hours in each day. I was on vacation for two weeks, the last two weeks, and we work harder than when I'm at my regular full-time job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but here now it is back to work and we're still filming at 11 o'clock at night on a weeknight, just so you guys know, that's the reality of the situation. You may or may not know it. Um, there's always deadlines and we were just talking about that off camera. It was never. wonderful. Mm -hmm. We never have arguments never. ever. It's just like pure marital bliss 100% mm -hmm. of the time. time. We always see perfectly eye to eye. Mm -hmm. We never have problems. Never argue. Yes, no. it's perfect. So anyway guys, <laughs> be nice to my camera crew. The cats are fighting in the background. <laughs> the cats never destroy things while we're filming. No. There's never any of them meowing incessantly <laughs> while we're trying to say something. They never jump into the windows and crash violently <laughs> as they're being attacked by animals. This stuff never happens during our videos. I could go on, but I'm not <laughs> going to. She's cringing. Anyway, guys, we really appreciate your patronage. It is without, without your help, we wouldn't be where we are. So we owe a lot to you and thank you. Please come back for more.